Are we live? Are we live? Are we live? Seems good. Let's continue with space exploration. And now that we have our lovely auto crafter, uh, the universe is a little bit more our oyster. Uh, I do need to build a construction train, and the problem that I still haven't uh, solved or decided on, um, I'm pretty sure we're going to have to uh, just tolerate having just one cargo wagon, because we can read the contents of a train, but we can't read the contents of an individual cargo wagon. And if we're doing... Uh, I, I don't want to do the, like very specific set inputs uh, that never change. I want it to be a bit more agile than that. So I want uh, constant combinators to determine to determine what we're going to put into the train. And uh, yeah, basically put in a precise number uh, with the inserters, setting the stack sizes, setting filters, and so on. Soulburn, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I did that once. Uh, the construction train. It's a pretty cool combinator setup. Thank you. Do you mean the auto crafter or the old? Uh, that's what you did once. Yeah, this is uh, definitely the best iteration. Um, that I've built of this thing. And I can see we're onto the low priority um, uh, recipes now, so that's a good sign. Um, Alright, so what do we want in our... Well, the point is we're going to be able to change it, so we don't have to worry too much about planning this, uh, planning this all out ahead of time. Um, but since the block, uh, it says 1.3k rail, if we do the standard rail block with, um, with some input and output rail. So I'm going to say 1.4k, uh, for rail. That's going to leave us with, um, let's see, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14... Uh, we've got this many stacks for other things. So I wanted to see that autocrafter thing. If you have time later to show, uh, sure. You can show it any time you like. I did a supply train with exact numbers. One filter stack inserter, indeed. Uh, yeah, it's it gets a bit tricky if you try to use more than one. Um, but yeah, okay, so our autocrafter. Um, I'll try and run through this relatively quickly. I did explain it yesterday. Um, actually, let's jump to the editor space for it. Um, and then we can move things around and tear things up a bit without messing with anything. Uh, so we have eight assembly machines with crafting combinators um, around a central buffer warehouse. Um, the overflow chest uh, th this chest is where all of the solid input and output uh, comes from, uh, or, or goes from each assembly machine. OMG beautiful, thank you. Game to relax, Larius, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. I really like that you start right away at the scheduled time, thank you. I do my best. Uh, so, uh, there's a few reasons for this, but I'll just explain why, what we do for the moment. Uh, we have static requests in the buffer warehouse. We're not using uh, recipe combinators to dynamically set requests. Um, we're just going to request whatever the machines need in here um, all the time. It will end up over full, like uh, a significant amount more than you ask for of various resources. Um, so what we have up here is... A requester chest that is reading from the buffer chest and setting requests to everything that happens to be in this uh, uh, in this buffer chest. 
Um, so the bots will try to take everything out of this chest and put it into here. Except that we've got some negative numbers up here uh, to say we do want to have up to 500 iron plate, uh, for example, uh, in this buffer chest. Because when you use set requests or set filters, uh, a negative number doesn't count. So it'll implicitly do addition and subtraction between those variables. Sushi chest, indeed. That's one way to put it. Hope you're doing good, thank you. Uh, Granite DK, good. Uh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Did I miss anyone? Don't think so. Um, I also added something since I made the blueprint up here, whereby we're going to take whatever is in set requests. Hold on. Oh no, that's that's right. Whatever is in this buffer chest, we're going to multiply by negative a million. Uh, so that basically, if there's a single green circuit in this purple chest, we're going to stop requesting green circuits here until it's gone. Um, that way we don't get the bots moving items around in circles between these two. So that's just contents of this uh, purple chest times negative a million. Uh goes to the set requests. Uh, now for the meat of how this thing works. We have a whole bunch of recipes, uh, things we want to make and count. Uh, we do have a lower priority set of them up here, we'll get to that in a sec. But basically um, we are reading from the logistic network, uh, checking that that's positive for each multiplying by negative one, and that way we get a, uh, implicit addition and subtraction between the 200 yellow inserters that we want and the expressed as a negative however many yellow inserters we already have. Uh, and then if it turns out that we've got all of these things already, we're going to output 1p to this thing. And then if P is greater than zero, we're going to push these things through as well. Uh, and then we've just got negative 1P over here because we don't want the P signal uh, to go to the crafting combinators. Um, as for... Uh, why don't I set a little something here to demonstrate a bit more clearly? As for how we get these signals... Uh, let's just empty this. Crafting combinator. Green wire. Okay. So we have a bunch of... Whoops. We have a bunch of requests over here. And we want to separate... Uh, let me just make this update faster. Uh, we want to separate all of these signals so that each of these crafting combinators just receives one signal. And the way that we do that is, to start with, we go each greater than zero output each input count, just gives us arbitrarily the first signal uh, based on the item ID. So you can see on the right there the four input signals and it's outputting just one. Um, that goes straight to the crafting combinator. We then multiply that result by negative one and subtract it from the main lot. Uh, and then we pass that to the next uh, repetition of all of this. Um, down here we have a multiplied by negative one, uh, sorry, multiplied by one uh, combinator. All that's doing is acting as a one-way piece of wire so that we don't get signals going round and round in circles here and doing very weird things. Uh, so the positive value of all of the stuff um, goes to both of these and the negative one of the yellow belt that we've subtracted from the list uh, goes to both of these as well. And that's basically how that works. 
Absolute insanity. <laughs> Evil Pla, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, and I think that just about explains everything. Theoretically, if I explained that okay, and you slowed down the recording and took your time, you should be able to make all of that. Theoretically. Uh, but yeah, I think that is looking pretty good, actually. You explained it okay? Alright, thank you. Um, alright, so we need to... I, I do want a big... Um, I do want a big requested chest. Actually, make it a buffer chest. Just like this one. Um, to put stuff into our cargo wagon. Actually, this is only 40 stacks. And this is... 512. That might be a bit much. The only reason I necessarily want... Um, such a big chest is in case we want to have multiple inserters load this thing. Um, but that's going to be much more difficult than using just one. I'll think about it. Um, so we have our list of stuff that we want to put into the train. We want to read from the train as well. So read train contents. Uh, we want to subtract the train contents from what we want to put into the train. And then we want to uh, pass those filters through to our stack filter inserter. And we could either control the uh, stack size of the stack filter inserter for the thing that we're trying to put into the train. And or we could have a inserter that's going to take out stuff that's not supposed to be in there, which I think we want to have anyway. Um, so let's do a arithmetic. Can we put this over here actually, just so it's out of the way of what we're building? We're going to go each times negative one. For everything that's already in the train. Uh, where's our wire? There we go. And that is going to meet with the positive signals of what we want to have in the train. Uh, and that is going to go to our set filters whitelist um, stack filter inserter. And I'm going to drink my drink, Polly. Ten out of ten would learn again. Thank you. Um, is that actually enough? It is going to oversupply it. We haven't managed the stack sizes. Um, once again, I really wish we could set stack size to... Well, normally we only have one filter on a stack filter inserter, but that's not how this works here. Uh, we could arrange to only have one filter on st uh, the stack filter inserter. In fact, I think I might do that. Then again, I don't know if it's actually a problem if it receives multiple. It'll only reinsert one type of item at a time. Um, but regardless, I was thinking I might use a anything signal. So that we can isolate the one thing that we're trying to put in the train at the moment. Um, and therefore we can isolate what the stack size should be. Um, but yeah, I would love it if inserters had a setting whereby if we're setting filters, we can set the stack size to whatever filter that they're currently, like, control signal rail. And then when, when that changes, it becomes control signal 
whatever else. Unfortunately, that's not quite how this works. Um, but what we can do is have one more... Uh, how about an arithmetic combinator here? And we're just going to take uh, each times one output s for stack size. Um, now, if I pass this straight to here, there is going to be a one tick delay in updating the stack size compared to setting the filter. Uh, and the question is, is that a problem? I'll use a red wire here so we don't have this going around in circles. Um, so we're just going to take the total of stuff we're still trying to put into the train, isolate one signal, uh, that sets filter, and then whatever it is times one output s for set stack size. Um, so currently it says stack size 5 because that's our biggest stack size. We're trying to put in another 1.2k rail. Oh, and uh, we could probably... Yeah, that'll be fine. Um, we'll set filter, set requests on this. So whatever... Whatever we're trying to put in the train here, the bots will bring. Maybe I should make it a requester chest so that uh, whatever it is doesn't count as being in the robot network. And doesn't count towards the count of stuff we already have um, for the purpose of the auto crafter. JP. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Get it done. Good to see you again also. That looks easy. Uh, yeah, so far. Now that's not easy. We'll see. Um, the basic idea of it is not that complicated, but refining it so it works a bit better is uh, going to be a bit more challenging. Um, I was thinking... Just to make sure this never completely overfills, uh, we should probably have... Hmm. I don't think we should subtract what we're... what's already in the train from what's supposed to go into this uh, buffer warehouse. So we're just going to get a red signal, a, a red wire from the constant combinator. So that it's not receiving that signal from there. Um, and then we can use... Well, uh, this is the part where if we go set filters blacklist, um, as long as we're only dealing with up to four types of item, uh, that's going to be enough by itself. But once we get to five types of items in here, um, that's not going to be good enough. So what we'll do instead... We don't need to worry that we can't read contents from this buffer... Uh, what's going to be a requester chest, I think. Um, because the red wire signal is already telling us what's supposed to be in here. Uh, so I think we're going to have to do a... Uh, like, inverted list here. So instead of a blacklist, we're going to turn it into a whitelist. Wait, no. That would mean we do have to read whatever's in this uh, request warehouse. Hmm. Because we would normally read from the request warehouse, um, subtract what's supposed to be in there, and then pass the rest through as set filter whitelist to take out the excess. Incidentally, we're going to be doing the same thing with the train down here. Um, so like... Let's see. Read train contents is here. 
That's got a long way to go to get over here. Uh, read train contents. Uh, what is supposed to be in the train minus what's in the train? I think we want it the other way around for this one, right? Whatever is... Whatever is in the train minus what's supposed to be in the train. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So we need another times negative one for this. Um, let's just simplify this for a moment by taking this away. Make sure we don't get confused. So we're going to subtract... Whoops. Pick a dollies myself. Uh, subtract what is... Uh, get a negative what's, for what's supposed to be in the train. Add it to what is in the train. But I don't want it to interfere with this signal. So I think we'll do a red wire straight from the train stop to here. So this red wire right here is going to be whatever is not supposed to be in the train, I think. Output signals, negative 100, 1.4k. No, wait. Uh, let me connect this up here. Here we go. So, so far we're saying there should be 100 repair packs and 1.4k rail in this train. Um... And if we got our logic right, what's on this red wire should be everything else. Um, we've got negative 1.2k rail, which means we want another 1.2k rail. Negative uh, 94 repair packs, that's correct. Uh, con construction box, solid rocket fuel, combinators and so on, not supposed to be in the train right now. So that's looking correct. Um, and we want to pass that through to set filters whitelist on this inserter. Um, but again, we might want to... We, we might want to either just have a filter inserter that's set to stack size 1 uh, is the easiest way we can do this. So that if we have extra of something, it's not going to take out more than it's supposed to. Let's put in some stuff that's not supposed to be there. Fantastic. Okay, that's good. Um, it's either that or we'd have to do something... Maybe just do this again. I, I guess we could do it that way. Uh, let's go like this. Red wire goes to here. And then it's kind of hard to see. Green wire isn't connected right now. Green wire just touches these two at the front and goes to the inserter. And we'll remove the stack size limitation. Uh, set filters whitelist. Set stack size. Uh, so it's going to be the same as this, right? Yeah. Yeah, that seems fine. Um, so then if we put in an extra 100 repair packs or more. Do I have repair packs here? I'm sure I I may not have requested them yet. Nope, here they are. Let's go for some more repair packs. Oops. And I would like to have those delivered, please. Oops. And actually, I want to pick up some extras. Uh, so where are they? Repair pack. 
Here we go. Alright, so we have all the repair packs. We're going to put in a bunch of extra repair packs, and we can see the number... You can see the S is the same as repair packs, so that it's setting the stack size. We should end up with exactly 100 uh, repair packs in here. And there it is. Fantastic. So as long as we're happy with just one stack inserter for input and for output, uh, I think this will be okay. Um, we could maybe make the circuit layout a bit neater, perhaps. I'm not necessarily sure it's that easy. Uh, and then we want some kind of mechanism to take things out of here uh, if... if we are... Oh yeah, it does need to be a requester chest because uh, it's the only thing that can take from buffer chests. I'm not sure how to go about removing extra stuff that's not supposed to be in this requester warehouse. Because we can't actually read what's in the requester warehouse. I have done it indirectly, uh, and that's how I was using bots and buffer chests on spaceships. But that's with a very specific robot network, where we read like, every other place that, let's say, copper core fragments are allowed to be in that robot network, and subtract that from reading the reading the contents of the logistic network, uh, and then we can calculate and infer what is actually in the ship at the time. But I don't think we can really, or I don't want to, uh, put circuit wire on every possible uh, every possible storage chest that could contain this stuff. Not to not to mention this is a requester chest, so this stuff doesn't count as being in the logistic network anyway. Myclad, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, so because we're setting requests, we can't read contents, and I can't... I had this problem uh, last playthrough, actually, as well. The massive chest size is probably going to greatly mitigate this. Um, in fact, it, it might just be more than enough. But worst case, I could always, like... We can't whitelist once there's more than four of these, is the thing. Or blacklist. Inserter with blacklist isn't working because you cannot set enough items. Yeah. Um, we only get four filters on a filter inserter. And we can't read what's in the chest to determine what we would set as a whitelist to get this out. So I can either just wait and hope this doesn't get full and manually fix it if it does, or I could have uh, a timer periodically emptying the chest. That's about all I can think of right now. I mean, that would work. Uh, if we have, like, some loaders going from here to a buffer chest like that, and we just... I don't know, every two hours or something, run it for a few minutes and empty whatever's in here. Who knows? I ended up uh, using single boxes for every item to get my building train loaded in a sane amount of time. That's fine until you have uh, until you need more than 12 types of item. Uh, it's also very specific, like, we we wouldn't be able to just change our 
combinator settings right here to determine what's supposed to be in the train. Uh, so we want uh, 50 construction bots precisely. I think it was based off your old exact loader, indeed. Uh, and we're just going to keep adding things as we realize we need more stuff. Uh, rail signals. How many rail signals is in one block? That's what I want to aim to be able to build, ideally. 200, let's call that 250 and 50. Um, since they'll take up that much space with stacks regardless. One stack of regular train stops. One stack of logistic train stops. Loaders and unloaders. Assembly machines. Inserters. We're definitely going to need a second combinator, um, since we have 40 stacks to play with. Uh, rail's only taking up, like, 14. Well, maybe not. I don't know, at this rate we'll need another train, which might not be the worst idea, or... Uh, I, I, I do, but I don't want to have it have more than one cargo wagon. Once we have more than one cargo wagon, we can't tell what's in the train. Or we can, but not what's in each cargo wagon. And that's a problem. Very difficult to have the inserters not get jammed. Uh, if we're putting stuff in willy-nilly into different cargo wagons. Um, but I'm hoping we can at least get, like, most things built with a single cargo wagon. Or I could lower the volume of rail that we take out in one trip. That'll be a huge help, actually. Uh, it's usually just one stack of assembly machines. Uh, a couple of stacks of fast inserters. Let's see. Let's put the inserters and belts up here. Um, I don't think we're bothering with yellow belt anymore. Let's put splitters here, actually. And then blue belt. I'll just add all of these at one stack. And see how much space we have left. If we have any space left, that is. Maybe a separate train for rails and signals? Yeah, I was seriously considering that. Or we could even have, um, we could have another cargo wagon or two for high volume stuff. And we could, we could put that in just using filters, uh, and then all of the miscellaneous stuff can go in this one cargo wagon. So if we don't put any rail in this one, we can have this thing ignore rail and cal like, calculate whatever's supposed to be in here. So we'd have like an each greater than zero output each coming from the train stop. Uh, and then put a constant combinator on this side with like negative a million rail. And chain signals and so on. What's taking so long? We don't have that many inserters.
Good morning, Erpful Gerd. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Is this your primary builder train? Uh, indeed it is. It's the only one. We're just figuring it out right now. Maholic, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hmm. I think I'll cut the rail in half, so it would take two trips. Um... Uh, maybe... 150? But then we still have a whole stack for rail signals. Uh, if we cut the rail in half, it's going to take two trips to make a block, but... Maybe that's okay. It's definitely going to be better... If we have separate... Uh, power armor grids building at the same time. Do you have logi ports on the train? Yes. Definitely do. What are you trying to do? Uh, so I want my construction train, which is going to use uh, personal robo ports and solar panels. Um, uh, I want to be able to set what it carries with combinators and ideally i would like it to carry enough stuff to build any rail block that we decide we need but we would need a longer train for that and there's a problem with longer trains and precise loading which is you can tell what's in a train but you can't tell what's in an individual cargo wagon so i think we're probably sticking with just the one cargo wagon uh, maybe we could have, like, certain cargo wagons that are static with what they request, like lots of rail. Locking item spot in wagon is better. Uh, only if you don't care to change what goes into the train easily. Oxyway Gaming, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Also, the inserters can get jammed. So why do you need to know what's in each cargo wagon? Uh, because I want to use circuits to precisely load or unload. Um, so that the... Uh, so that A, we can change what we're pro uh, automatically putting in the train just by changing these combinators. Uh, B, we can get the logistic system to uh, take whatever comes back if we deconstruct something uh we can get it to throw that back into the logistic network which come to think of it is another reason why we would need to empty this um are we sure that a buffer chest couldn't work with this hmm we are keeping certain things in here I could set the target for, like, assembly machines, example, for example, uh, to be higher than the amount that we allow in this buffer chest. And that way, this could be a buffer chest and it would still receive stuff that this thing makes. El Pancho, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Does it matter? Just look at train stops, get train contents, and maybe set filters accordingly. Uh, we're getting the contents already, um, so that we can check how much more stuff we have to put in. Is there a way to make the new location set the request for items based on need? I think you need a mod uh, to to get signals based on ghosts for that, uh, but possibly. Possibly. Uh, let's add some underground pipe and regular pipe, chemical plants. Yeah, I, I think we're going to want a longer train. 
but I'll get this prototype going. So many ways to solve it, indeed. Put a small requester chest beside the big one. Uh, a small requester chest beside the big one. Uh, I was thinking, actually, we should probably put this thing down here. And that should be an act. Whoa, okay. Uh, that should be an active provider. We power that. Not very cleanly. Oh, yes, we can. So anything that's not supposed to be in this train uh, is going to get thrown straight back into the rail net, uh, the logistic network. Okay, there's at least one thing that we've already got blueprints for that we need to build more of, or build the first one on this planet. Uh, we're totally out of lubricant, wow. Alright, well, I was thinking about doing this already anyway. Let's add a oil block up here. Uh, where did I put it? Here we go. Basic oil. Fantastic. Uh, so that is also going to need refineries. Uh, huge storage tanks. We don't really need the beacons yet. And pumps. We've got four stacks left. Oh no, this is happening already? I think I need that mod. Uh, I don't know if this will get sorted until I click on it though, even if I do use the auto-sorting mod. Um, but see how there's 49 stack filter inserters here and one over here? Uh, that will happen even if we do have... Uh, filter slots like this. Um, unless literally all of them are set as filter slots. But we have to have an empty slot so that if bots deconstruct something, they can bring stuff back. Um, I have this I have this problem a lot with the Spidertrons as well, last playthrough. Pick a inventory tools sorts, but only if you click on something. Yeah. I mean, the alternative is I literally empty this every time it comes back, and then we start over once it's empty. I haven't played with Mudslet yet, fair enough. Karma Jin, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I would suggest that, emptying it. Uh, we could use the bulk rail unloader. Unfortunately, we can't disable a bulk rail. I'm pretty sure we can't disable this. It just reads, right? Yeah, the only mode of operation on this is read contents. So what we could do is... When the train comes home, uh, it parks here, uses the bulk rail unloader and then comes to here to receive stuff. I think that's actually by far the best way to go about this. Yeah, that that might be surprisingly simple. And unpower it? What? Only played with mirror mods? Like for chemical plants and stuff? Alright, um, I don't think we need any, like, conditions on this one like we usually have. Like, we don't need to read the contents or anything like that. Uh, all we need is to shove it all into a active provider chest. Oh, uh, we don't even need to, um, we don't even need, like, loaders, because... Uh, the bulk rail unloader will automatically... Whoops. 
uh, will automatically put stuff into this active provider chest. And I don't particularly care if it's not as fast as like two to four uh, express unloaders. Uh, it doesn't need to be. Okay, so this is going to be uh, construct o train emptier. Let's put a little icon there if we can. I don't really want the the crisscross. Oh, there should be a bin. Here we go. Remove. How how about that? It's a, li it's a little dark, but you get the idea. So we're going to say this vanilla schedule is uh, emptier. Whoops. Wait until empty cargo. And then... Well, now that we've added a stop to this... I don't know how to tell it that it's not allowed to go... Hmm. Hmm. Can we read a rail signal here? How does this work? I want to say if we detect that the train is at home. Uh-oh. If we detect that the train is at home, we're not gonna allow this rail signal. Um, so it should have no path right now. Read signal. No, close signal. So it's currently closed. So the train should have no path to do a roundabout shenanigans and come back here right now. Right? And if I don't do that, it could? I don't know. Is it going to say no path? We're going to have to fill it first. And this is making me really want to be able to load it faster than with one stack inserter. Hmm. How much are we trying to put in still? This many things. Uh, could we maybe have a testing setup that is far fewer items? Alright, let's just say construction bots. 50 and nothing else. So we're going to drain everything out of here. Everything else. Are we not emptying this? Yeah, we are. Okay, I'll take all of that. So then the train schedule says five seconds of inactivity, and then it's going to go back to the emptier. Uh, could we instead have it go back home? And then... I want to know if this, this signal being closed by the circuit network would prevent the train from doing that loop-de-loop. -loop. It does not. Alright. Well... In that case, we're gonna need... Let's just stop this for a sec. Uh, in that case... I think we just have a condition that's never met here, actually. I could set the cargo conditions just so that we can easily see if this is fully loaded. But 
I'm thinking like passenger present and not present. And this train is not going to go anywhere until we give it a temp stop. And then I want it to come back home and go to the emptier. Can we not order this so that it'll be easy to add a temp stop and have it go to the emptier after that? Item count and never tell it an item, indeed. Fraser K, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It's the signal actually closed, doesn't have a set condition. Uh, yeah, I had the condition set to, like, the default, like this, which is just always going to have it closed. It's the same as if I said, like, um, tick is less than tick. So if we tell it to go here, it definitely can go through that signal. But now if I try to send it here... Oh, it's actually... Oh, huh. that accomplished nothing. Oh wait, that's closed condition. Okay, tick equals tick. Are you able to go here? Yes, you are. Alright, so it's still, it's still working the way I thought it does. It doesn't actually stop the train. Okay then. Um, so I don't think we're going to control that with signals. Hmm. I really wish we could turn the bulk rail loaders or unloaders on and off. But, alas. But I think we've almost got what I want here. I just wish I could set it up so that the ordering of these is such that if I make a temp stop, uh, the order is going to be here, so I don't have to drag that up. But I guess I'm going to have to program in, like, a minute of inactivity here or something anyway, so it doesn't make that much difference. Can you do something worth setting the stop limits? Oh, with setting the stop limits. Uh, possibly. Except how do we know? Oh, that's easy, actually. Uh, retrain content. Uh, let's say... This green wire. And this is just going to be... Uh, enable, disable, which can cause problems, but it, there's literally one train that uses this stop. It'll be fine. Uh, if everything equals zero. So this will be disabled until the moment this train leaves. Perfect. But that actually doesn't change anything. <laughs> like, we're still going to... Uh, if I don't do that logic, we're still going to have a temporary stop that is just before the Constructotron uh, home station. So it doesn't really change anything. Yeah. I mean, I still have to fiddle a little bit with the temp stop whenever I want it to go and build something anyway. So it's like half a second uh, of difference here. So I'll just, once I set a temp stop where we want to build, I'm going to drag that down to, so that the emptier comes next. Uh, on the off chance that, like if the train comes back with stone and coal from breaking rocks or something, That'll get dropped into the network here.
I use a mod that sets trains to manual when they arrive at a temp stop. Interesting. Train cart should be smaller considering it holds the same amount as a one by one chest. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit weird that way. Oh, and we emptied this. Whoops. It's probably fine. Okay. Um, so that raises the question of... Theoretically, we should never need to take stuff out here. Uh, that somehow got in the cargo wagon that's not supposed to be there. Well, it depends on if I tell the train to empty itself every time when it comes back. Better to have this and not need it, I think. Okay. Would it take out of you us? You would take it out of you us swapping to build other things? What? Can you add more loading inserters? Um, I can, but it makes it more complicated um, to put in precisely the amount of stuff that we want. That's the problem, right? Load time? I'm not that worried about load time. Um, as long as it's not really long. Um, but yeah, we can absolutely... Let me move this substation down a bit. I'll put the unloading side down here. And that'll go... Yeah. Um, what we can do is... We can't set filters and have an enable disable condition, unfortunately. But I could have uh one more combinator here. If anything greater than whatever the maximum stack size, let's just call it twelve. Because that's is that as high as our stack sizes will get with SEK2? I don't know, let's just pretend it is for now. Uh, if anything is greater than six times max stack size, uh, max uh, stack size for the inserters, that is. So 612's uh, 70? 72, derp. Uh, if anything greater than 72, output anything input count. Or anything one would do the same thing here. Uh, and we're going to send that signal to the rest of these inserters. Uh, and they're just going to have set filters, whitelist. And they're always going to be max stack size. So if we then say, I want to have 2000 rail. Uh, they should, these five here should keep going until we're down to, like, less than 72, uh, rail left to put in. And then the one inserter is going to do the rest. Uh-oh. Wait, no, I said 2,000, didn't I? Autosave. There we go. Okay, here we go. That's looking good. And there it is, exactly 2,000. Okay. In this case, um, I'm definitely sticking with the one big chest. Neat, indeed. Yeah, I'm surprised it only took one more combinator, actually. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, okay. So we have fast and precise loading. We have precise unloading if there's somehow something in here that's not supposed to be. 
uh, which is also as fast as one inserter can go. Uh, we've got something to empty the train, um, which we might do from time to time. Um, the only thing that I'm not a thousand percent satisfied with here is... We don't have multiple cargo wagons. And I'm really not sure how I want to go about... I could have... No, it wouldn't work unless we can rely on these uh, requester chests staying exactly in sync, or having more than enough of each item. But if I did this uh, in parallel and synchronized, theoretically we could keep these numbers precise. I think we'd need to make sure there's a bit more slack in each cargo wagon. Just a thought, do you want to always empty or just manually empty it when you need to? Uh, yeah, I think it's really, it, it really depends on uh, the construction bots picking stuff up and putting it back into the train, uh, I think is the main thing. If they are only building stuff, which most of the time they will, uh, then we shouldn't end up with those split stacks. Um, but if there's any doubt about it whatsoever, we can just send the train straight to the emptier. Can you control the unloaded track with wire? Uh, no. The uh, bulk rail unloader, you mean? Uh, the only The only thing we can do with the circuit wire here is read contents. Unfortunately. Uh, I don't suppose there's a mod that programmatically lets you set limits like this? Maybe that would allow it? Um, but yeah. We could just do, like, more than one of these trains. Might be the way to go. We could put another one up here, maybe? Oh, that fits perfectly. Should we just have a pair of these? Is the rail going to line up well enough with our train I.O.? Not really. We'd have to move it over a bit. Alternatively, 12 stack inserters are pretty quick. Uh, yeah, this is quick enough. I mean, we did 2,000 rail in a very short time, and we've still only got a stack size of one. It's fine. A uh, stack size of five, rather, is what I meant to say. How much space would we need to make this work? We'd have to move all of this over, like, about this much, which isn't a whole lot. If we want to have two of these in parallel. But I think, uh, I don't know, we'll see how it goes just using a short train like this. Um, so let's say this much of all of this stuff. We are trying to make, uh, I think there's some steel underground pipe in this build. We're trying to make oil again. There is indeed. Why is there a single piece of steel pipe? How dare you. Uh, let's go with steel underground, steel pipe. I'm really thinking we should probably have a cargo wagon or two that just is static and always requests lots of rail belt chain uh rail signals and so on uh, and pipe and stuff all, all of the high volume things 
Um, and we can have the the one cargo wagon respond to the combinator stuff. I think that's probably how we'll go. But let's play with our prototype first. Uh, we are going to need some... storage tanks. And why are we not putting them in here? Oh, we are. Fantastic. Oh, those stacked to 40, not 50. So then we change that there, and we're left with exactly 40 of these. Okay. How's our autocrafter doing? I would have thought we'd have more inserters. We're looking for 200. So... There's 64... Filter inserters in here. We're looking for 50. Oh, I see. It's because it's because of the anything signal. Because we want to control stack size, we need to pick just one signal. And we don't have... For some reason, we don't have uh, 20 huge storage tanks just yet. Can we maybe make that happen a little bit sooner? Seems good. I was also thinking about a way to have the... Uh, a bit more programmatically built in as opposed to just using a delay in the crafting combinator uh, updating. Uh, I want the prerequisite items to be overbuilt um, a bit more. I don't think there's really a solution to this, but I'd also love it if when we're running out of high priority stuff to make, we don't end up with just one recipe sitting here while all of this stuff is still waiting. Who knows, maybe with eight assembly machines, there's really no need for the priority system. Okay. Do we have 15 tanks? Fantastic. What about a second train for fluid builds? Uh, second train? Oh, right. Yeah, I think I would just... Uh, like I said before, I think we might have one cargo wagon that's programmatically filled like this. And then maybe we could have a cargo wagon or two. Um, we can fit just barely, I think. Uh, we can fit a five-length train here without disrupting traffic any more than it's already doing. So we could probably add uh, two more cargo wagons. Um, and we'll use like the traditional easy method of filters and stuff. Uh, to just have static requests for high volume things like belts and rail. Um, but for now we're just still playing with this uh, prototype right here. Fantastic, indeed. Alright, let's change that setting back. Nice. Can we get some more steel pipe? We're going as fast as we can. Maybe I should have steel pipe uh, crafted all the time. Steel pipe. And steel pipe goes here. And we're not gonna... Uh-oh. Uh, let's put a limit on these two, so they can share a chest. Steel pipe. 
that's not going to help. There we go. Close enough. Alright. So we should have our big tanks here. Fantastic. Let's also add refineries. Uh, oil refinery stacks to 10. I think there's more than 10 up here, but it's fine. And then... Substations, big poles, uh, pumps. Big poles, substations, pumps. What else are we building up here? Lamps? Oh no, those are from the train stops. Uh, I think that might be everything, actually. Oh, combinators. At the very least, constant combinators. But let's request the other two as well. And I'm sure we're getting low on empty spaces here. What are we trying to load right now? Red inserters. Oh, do I need to request more than... 50, for example? Or why don't we have... We should have enough inserters. How many did I request up here? Oh, I didn't do any red inserters. Whoops. Well, there's your problem. Can I set an LTN station to read from the entire logistic network? Yes. Uh, in fact, we did that quite a bit in the last playthrough. Uh, it's a bit tricky, but you can absolutely get an LTN station to offer to the rail network everything that's in a logistic network. Um, the tricky part is loading it quickly and precisely. Um, but yes, you can read from a RoboPort, uh, send that signal to the logistic train stop input, uh, and then have a fancy loading system so that it actually doesn't get stuck. Quick question, is 1.0 evol uh, evolution the max evolution, or just when biters level up? I think it's maximum, right? Uh, anyone want to correct me on that? So this is full. I think I asked for too much stuff. More than likely. Um, yeah, there's still filters set on here, so it's still trying to put in more. Okay. How about we drop some of the requests for rail? Put this down to 500? 100? Um, have we got the combinators? We do. So, counterintuitively enough, uh, one of the big problems with a construction train as opposed to Spider-Trons is we don't have nearly as much inventory space to play with. Playing K2SE with Rampant and I'm at 0.29 evolution. Only 14 hours in, that seems like I'm doomed then. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, seen any nuke fighters? Probably not, based on my own playthrough lately. We did have to remove Rampant because unfortunately it eventually just... Uh, all of a sudden, really murdered the UPS. Like, it went from 60 to 20 in less than a minute. Worth noting is that evolution doesn't really increase linearly. Uh, interesting. Okay, um, I don't know what we're missing here. Oh, assembly machines. 
Uh, that doesn't matter for this build, but in general, that's kind of important. Hmm. Hasn't been bad. I'm next to an Inferno tribe. So far, red ammo and a light tote wall is holding them back. No problem. Good luck. I'm thinking maybe we could do this with multiple cargo wagons. If we use signal separation, like we do uh, to get the separate recipes up here, uh, we could maybe have a rotation of signal separation so that, uh, let's say we have three cargo wagons, um, and let's just say that Let's pretend that these are the first three, uh, the first six signals in order. So, transport belt is going to go in the first one. Uh, undergrounds are going to go in the second one. Splitters are going to go in the third. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. For which cargo wagon these are going to go in. Um, and that would avoid... That would allow us to do our precise inserting. Across multiple cargo wagons at the same time. The question is, uh, can I come up with... I don't know. I, I don't think... Okay, I definitely can't do it, like, in the next five minutes. Um, I don't know how I could make these signal separators work with recursion going in circles. We could maybe wait until the first three types of items have been finished. Uh, like, the, the first three items are full in the, the cargo wagons, and then switch to the next three somehow. Recursion, indeed. Uh, a lot easier to do with uh, programming language than combinators. I don't think I've ever used recursion with combinators. Alright, you know what? I'm, I'm, I've, I've had enough of messing around with this. Let's go and inactivity one minute. I want to see our construction, uh, our prototype construction train in action. That's pretty cool, to be honest. Uh, and I'll have it go to the trash after this, just to make sure the inventory is sorted. Even just the prototype working with one... Uh... Oh. Yeah, we're gonna, ha we're gonna have to have some empty space. Uh, I did say that before, but yeah, right now that's not a thing we have. Hmm. So we only actually have like 39 stacks available per cargo wagon. Um, I think it's going to reach a minute of inactivity. We didn't give him cliff explosives. Uh, I think it's going to reach a minute of inactivity and then just come back. Oh, let's just say we we finished waiting. Uh, and the poor little bots are going to chase it home. It's going to go to the emptier, and then it's going to go back here looking for more stuff. Uh, which we definitely overdid the requests. But it is basically working. Cliff explosives. 20. I figured I took a peek at the tech tree and saw I've got plenty of options. Since you use K2, there will be things to help with high evolution later on. Indeed. Okay. 
if we go for static requests on the requester chest, we could only make the items that go into each cargo wagon available next to each cargo wagon. Uh, and then we could even just pass everything through from here. However, we would end up with the system only loading one cargo wagon at a time. Whoa, let's not do that. So I'm not sure how much we want to do it that way. Um, I, I could I could go down a rabbit hole with this for hours, actually. I think this is going to be one of those things where I spend a significant chunk of time uh, designing something and then showing it off on the next stream. Does the grid apply per wagon or per train? Uh, which grid are we talking about? Oh, the, um, this grid, right? Uh, it's per wagon. So we're going to need an awful lot of personal Roboport Mark IIs uh, for a longer train in order for it to have good range. Um, but yeah. I, I, I do really like where this is going. Let's put that aside for the moment and actually be a bit more productive. Uh, where's rail hiding? Can we get a dedicated chest for rail? Let's just put it up here. I'd like to be able to just come and click on it. Uh, could we have... All of the rail, please. Rail. Uh, it's actually all in one place. Looks like. Yeah, pretty much. It was up here. Don't, 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 don't. Just deconstruct it. You absolute dubs. And then undo. And then rail goes here from now on. So I'm thinking there's always a half-empty wagon for storing collected junk, but I'm not sure if that works. Yeah, um, I think the bare minimum would be one empty slot uh, per wagon. Um, of course, if they go picking up coal and stone, some of the bots are not going to be able to put the junk back in until another slot opens up. We really are wanting as many wagons as possible, the more I think about it. Because we want to have, like, preferably at least a couple of empty slots um, for each cargo wagon. Um, if I have... Yeah, I basically could set this system up separately for each, uh, for each cargo wagon. I'm, I'm going to absolutely despise how many combinators that takes, but I'm going to love the function of it. Okay. Let's remove that for now. I said I was going to go do something productive, but now I'm getting ideas. Craft worked. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And uh, Midden, good to see you again, by the way. Welcome, welcome also. Uh, all right, we need room for three of these. Um... Let's just manually move this train back here. Uh, I'm gonna... Let's just turn off the set requests for this for a sec. And I'm gonna cut and paste this for a moment. Uh, 
Maybe I should copy that into the editor. In fact, that would probably make a whole lot of sense. So we want... Uh, one, two, three cargo wagons like this. The shape of the combinators is going to be a little bit different, to say the least. So we can either set up specific requests for each cargo wagon, which I think I will do. Or we could have one set of requests and have it spill across all three cargo wagons. Um, but I think we'd have to uh, seriously slow our loading if we do that. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. How's this going to fit together? Let's just shove these combinators all the way up here first we can. We cannot. Alright, so this one has to go like down here. And whichever one that connects to should probably look like this. Doesn't actually connect there. It's fine. And then that goes down there. I think I'm going to find a neat place to put this. Oh, that's not too bad. Readability is dropping precipitously, but... But that's going to look a lot neater. I'll actually copy it like that. Okay, but then we need... Train inputs times negative one, or oh, train contents times negative one, goes to these three. We're subtracting that from what we're trying to put into the cargo wagon. Then we're getting one signal at a time, uh, getting the stack size, and activating all of these other ones if there's more than 72 to go. Uh, and then down here, removing whatever's not supposed to be in there. Seems good. That's actually looking pretty good. Surprisingly easy to connect to this. I think I'm forgetting, though... Uh-oh. I don't have the example of what we had before anymore. Uh, I think I'm forgetting a red wire that we had going from the train stop. And I can't remember where we had it. I can't remember if I got rid of the thing that was going to use that extra wire. Uh, we're reading train contents, subtracting it from what we want in the cargo wagon, and then I think that's basically it, actually. Wait, what's this? Negative one... Uh... Oh, I think this one. This one might also need train contents. Right? Can always check VOD, indeed. Uh, so how do we decide that something's not supposed to be here and empty it? We read from the train and... Uh, we have negatives of what is supposed to be there, positive from the train, and then anything that's greater than zero has to leave. So I 
think this goes here, actually. I hope that's right. Uh, let's throw together our... a little testing setup. Need to empty some of this stuff. Away you go. Uh, I said remove unfiltered items. What is this? Infinity chest. Do I have to set this to something? Why is it not removing the stuff? That's weird. It's not actually putting this stuff into the chest either. Uh, is time paused? Uh, it actually is. That's why. Okay then. That's why this was still flashing red. I don't know how time got paused. Alright, so we need a test train. Uh, how about just a regular train? One, two, three. Oh, and while we're at it, uh, one, two, three, one, two. And I don't know where this one starts. I think it goes like this. No. Does that line up correctly? It does not. All of these need to go over a bit. Oh, we can actually just copy paste to put that down. And then... no? Okay, bulk rail unloader. Third time's the charm. And we'll need room for... Uh, signals over here. Does that work? I should have... Oops. Uh, crap. I should have just changed the... Maybe I should keep this at visualization length 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Fantastic. So this is going to go probably bottom right of our rail block. So the train can come in here and then go over here. And then... Let's... Uh, Get some blank test combinators here. We want 100 transport belt, 100 red, and 100 blue. Am I gonna set requests? Wait, why isn't this. Oh, we don't have any power. We do have power. I forgot we have this stuff as well. Alright, set requests. Why is it empty? Because the combinator is switched off. Fantastic. Let's drop in a aggregate passive provider. And... Uh, bring the bot network down here. Is that not going to do it? Let's get some logistic bots as well. Fantastic. And that is clearly not working. Good to know. Is it a must to have every train input or output filtered? Uh, do you mean filtered like, like this? 
Uh, we're definitely not going to use filters for this one. Alright. So why did that happen? Oh, the train's not actually at the stop, is probably the reason. Train constructed Tron home. Uh, constructed on train home. Uh, so now the now it'll actually be able to read what's in the train. I didn't realize parking the train in front of the unloaders would work like that. Actually. Fascinating. Okay, so that's our train empty. And that's our train full. Yeah, I think we'll go with that. It's more combinators than I would like, but I'm really, really happy with the result. The inserters. Is it a must to have every train input or output filtered? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. Because we're setting filters to say which type of item they're tr uh, allowed to put in the train at this moment. Yeah, see how as soon as I mo removed the locomotive, uh, the inserters went wild again? That's why it filled everything before. Uh, okay, let's copy this and probably just deconstruct all of this, to be honest. Move this as well. And all of that. Uh, I guess we're going to have to put this here. It's taking up more space than I thought it would, but that's still acceptable. Yeah, it's actually taking up most of what's usually the output area uh, for the entire block. But tis not a problem. Can we stop bringing stuff back to me for now? There we go. Oh, the bots are still trying to put stuff back in that cargo wagon. Lol. Uh, I assume we wouldn't lose all of these when the bots pick them up, but I'd rather not risk it. I'm using the LTN combinators in random random times. They go to a block of cogs or plates. When I need coal or green chips, an instant mesh because the train delivers cogs on a coal requester. I wonder where the bug is. Alright, let's get a substation down here. Oh, it can actually almost cover all of this. In fact, oh, that's, that's elegant. I like that. And we're going to need one down here as well. Let me remove that and put it back. Actually, don't do it like that. There we go. That's not what I want to see. I want neat wise. Oh, this doesn't reach. Okay, then. Uh, and we're going to need a active provider chest, or three. If I place those by blueprint... Okay, yes, it does connect to the bulk rail unloader. Fantastic. This is slightly out of the robot network. And... Train. Oh, 
let's get some requested chests for the fuel. And solid rocket fuel. And just to be sure, we'll request that from buffers. We'll put enough to... Whoa, not 300. Oh, no. Uh, put enough to fill the train. The fuel part. Okay. So that just leaves the work of deciding what our train should carry. I think I would like rail in this one. Uh, fourteen hundred signals, signals. I hope I'm still not asking for too much. We'll see. Uh, why are we not taking the red belt out? Because I haven't got this wire connected? No, I do. Okay, why are we not taking out the stuff that doesn't belong here anymore? Let's see. I don't see... Oh, we're not because we're not reading from the train yet. Same, same problem as before. Uh, we need that to actually get a wire connection from the train. Uh, so can we go back here? And we'll set conditions that will never be met. Because we only want this to leave this station uh, when we say so. Where did it go? Here it comes. Actually, I should have it drop off the trash first. Too, too late. Oh, uh, did we name this? We did. There we go. It seems like we're still... Like we're still not emptying this uh, red belt here. Let's connect the green wire to this substation. So we have 792 red belt in here. Okay. And we don't have any requests for red belt. Let's trace this circuit back. Anything greater than zero output, anything input count. Each time's negative. Oh, I think I connected this to the wrong spot. I think it goes here. So it's uh, contents of the train minus what's supposed to be in the train. This is negative what's supposed to be in this cargo wagon. That should go there, I think. Yeah. No? No, I definitely... Messed up. Hold up. Oh, there's still yellow belt. Is it because we're emptying this one still? I think it might be. Uh, if we want it to control the stack size, we do need to keep doing this one thing at a time. Okay, let's help it remove yellow belt. And once that gets to zero, I think this will kick in and probably do red belt. No? Oh, there's yellow belt here. There's exactly 100 yellow belt in this train, right? Okay, and then I 
and then and then. This one's got red belt, this one's got yellow belt. Uh, maybe I should just have stack size one for removing things, because then I could have each here. And we could have filters for everything that's in the train, but not supposed to be in this cargo. But if I add more filters here... Hmm... That part's surprisingly tricky. I thought we would just be connecting a wire and it would be done. So I think uh, we can't connect this directly like this. We need it to go through all of this. So we've got contents of the train minus what's supposed to be in the train. Um... Uh, minus what's supposed to be in this cargo wagon. We can't read the contents of the one cargo wagon. Hmm. So if something that does belong in the train ended up in the wrong cargo wagon, we wouldn't be able to fix it? I guess? Not without going to the bulk rail unloaders. Speaking of which, let's do that and see what happens. It's not at a stop, it's overfilling. Yeah, that's what happened earlier. I am this guy. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Sigma Bean. Good to see you again also. Wait, what? Oh, I didn't add a condition for this. Empty cargo. Okay. So, oh, we have our research finished. All right. Empty all of that. I said all of it. Fantastic. And then precise load. And it should be fine. So we have certain assumptions. Um implicit in this system working. Uh, and those assumptions can be met if we just empty the train first. Still at 60 UPS? Yeah, I think we will be for a lot longer this time. Okay, that is... that's beautiful. That's working very well. I'm loving this system, except for the fact that uh, the unloader stuff... We might just not have the unloader stuff, and if we have to fix something, we'll send it to the bulk rail unloaders. It's going to mean quite a few less uh, combinators as well. So that's something. Let's get these items on the ground back into the network. To be honest, I'd kind of like it if if we empty this, uh, we have an active provider chest over here. Um, just so that some of the bot trips are going to be shorter. Might be good. All right. So now, now, now comes the time to design what is supposed to go in this train. Uh, I think I'd like to put belts over here, actually. So we'll skip yellow belt. Uh, let's say how much red belt goes in some of these builds. How about? 235, 21, 150, 275. Yeah, I think we'll go for 300.
of each of these. Uh, loaders, 50, 50. And splitters. That's that's the wrong type of red splitter. And loaded. Uh, undergrounds. He killed power to two inserters. Oh, so I did. Yeah, I was thinking of having the active provider over here. Have some belt coming from these. We could probably do that. Uh, it should result in less work for the boss. Oops, that's fine. And some splitters. Loaders. And like so. Wait, what? Oh yeah, that, that makes sense. Underground goes here. So when the train is emptied, there's probably going to be stuff that we want to put into these requested chests. Actually, it's they're probably going to have everything they want by the time the train comes back here. So maybe I should just put this buff, uh, this purple chest way up here. I don't know. I, I think that's actually not that necessary, to be honest. We're not going to be emptying it that often. Let's just do it like this. It's way neater. Okay. Uh, what else do we want? Assembly machines, of course. Uh, assembly machines. Inserters. Let's put inserters in the same one as belts, I think. So I think we've got, what, 28 stacks. How many types of inserters are there? Seven? Uh, so that's four. But we don't actually want four stacks of burner inserters. Uh, let's say 50 burners. Whoops. 100 yellows. How much go... How, how many inserters go in our rail block builds? Uh, 116 for the fast inserters. On that one. 96. 96. 96. Okay, I'm thinking 200 blues should be more than enough. Uh, one stack of filters. And... Four stacks of fast. One stack of stack filters. How much space are we going to have left over here? A little bit. Captain Tree, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'd say move the chest every little efficiency slash speed gain now will pay off handsomely in the long run. As in, move all of this up here. Or you mean the purple chest, like have it, have belts going up to here for when we empty the train. Should we research something? Probably. Uh, you know what, I'm not even going to try to calculate how much research we can do. Let's just prioritize what we want. I think we already have everything. Uh, 
As far as stuff that requires utility science packs, but nothing else like uh, prod science. Out of the things that only require this stuff, we've mostly got what we want for now. Uh, could do military. I'll just double check. There's no biters on Grenis. That's where we're going next. Yeah, no, there's nothing. We could do efficiency module three. Uh, I definitely want Holmium processing sorted out because we do have Holmium on Hagen, albeit finite. Condenser turbine? Uh, condenser turbine might be good for Grenis. We're probably going to use solar panels there, though. But then that's going to be a hassle. So is uranium. I think solar panels are less hassle overall in the long run. Your call, just moving the purple chest will probably help. Moving the whole construction setup could immensely uh, improve base synergy. Yeah, but we only need... Uh, we only need it to keep up with the construction train building new rail blocks. Um, and that's going to be bottlenecked on our deciding to build rail blocks and stuff like that. Uh, not to mention build everything that goes into the rail blocks. So I don't think we're too worried. Oh wow, we need utility science backs just for the first swarm safety. I forgot about that. Um... We should probably do cargo safety. What's the next tier? Needs needs one of these. And telescope. We already have one free telescope, but look how cheap this is. Uh, astrometrics facility. Let's get these two as well. Saves water in space. Indeed it does. Alright, can we get everything we need to build our oil block into this thing in one go? That'd be nice. Also, I need to give it um, robo-ports. We're going to go with... Uh, this many. Grid. Six of these down the bottom. And we'll wait for the rest. Are we already making more of these? Not quite. Uh, what else? Chemical plants? How many chemical plants go into some of our builds? Probably 48. Let's see. Chemical plant. Uh, that's not many. That's 48. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's five stacks of chemical plants, though, but maybe that's okay. And probably just couple of stacks of oil refineries. And we need tanks. One stack each. Uh, pipes. Actually, probably don't need that much steel pipe. Uh, steel pump. Maybe some storage tanks as well. I might have occasion to put them down just because of their shape. We need some rail things uh, as well. Train stop. 
train stop LTN and loaders and unloaders. That bothering is going to bother me. Turbines are used for power, indeed. Uh, have you done power pulse yet uh, for this thing? No, no, I haven't. Let's put them here. 50 and 50. So we got... Oh, containers might be good. How much space is left in this? Let's let the bots catch up with that um, so I don't miscalculate it. I'll probably want to add more belt and, and or inserters. I might put chests in this one. I don't think I've had occasion to use to use a single steel chest, but like a one by one chest in our rail block build so far. Um, we're using the 2x2s, 4x4s, 6x6s, and 3x3s, the delivery cannon chests, sometimes. One stack of that. I said one stack of that. I s what? Why is it not? There we go. Uh, 30 and 20. And then one stack of these. See how much room we have left after that. Oh, you can see there's no filters once you know it's once you see no filters on these inserters, you know your loading is finished. Construction bots, that's a good point. Uh we definitely want one stack of construction bots in each of these. Do I have my RoboPorts yet? I do not. Hmm. Can we force them a little bit? I wish I could, like, quickly turn all of these off. Uh, inserters, belts, and pipes. So when that refreshes, hopefully we'll be replacing those personal robo-ports pretty soon. Uh, we still have 15 stacks for this one, 14 for this one, and 15 for this one. You need to make sure the combined storage of steam and water doesn't exceed your max storage of either. Uh, yes, yeah, you do need slack for those uh, condenser turbine setups. Wind turbines, that's a good point, thank you. Uh, put them here. 50. And... I guess we're getting close to the point of let's build something and find out what we forgot. Uh, apart from adding rare machines like the electrolysis plants. I think we've actually got everything to make our oil block. And we're only waiting on delivery cannon chests. Uh, but we're also waiting on those robo ports. I'll just take the ones that I've got and spread them evenly across these. How many do I have? 28. Unfortunately, that doesn't divide by 3. Uh, let's put 9. Whoops. And the rest will be solar panels. And I don't know how much reach uh, 
are we going to have with that? 120 by 120. That's probably pretty good, actually. Give them some solar panels. Oops. Oh, we're already out. Oh, I haven't got personal logistics. There's probably already a bunch of... There we go. Okay. Uh, can I dump some of this stuff, please? Why am I requesting... Oh, because I was building those myself. Yeah, I can stop requesting 500 uh, chain signals all the time now. That's nice. Exactly 15. I uh, don't need this many repair packs either. Okay, what was I doing here? Is Tesla Tower researched? Uh, yes it is. Tesla Tower? Wait, no. Tesla... Tesla coil, is that the one you mean? Where we can use it to charge our... We can use it to charge our robot. Uh... I don't know. I The solar panels are kind of uh, cheaty, though. We get almost 200 kilowatts for a 2x2. Two two, uh, and that's just 24-7, I think. Well, is it 24-7? No, it's probably not 24-7, but, uh, like, this is just free power, right? Nine, six, and way more than six. Six. All right, that's as close as it's going to get. Uh, yeah, we, we, we do still have power problems because I don't have cover X. I have to keep adding storage space uh, for uranium-238, otherwise we don't get 235. Uh, and we're slowly running out. We won't be able to keep our nuclear reactors going indefinitely uh, until I get to the next planet so we can get that research. So I'm not that keen on stealing power from the network just yet, but I'll absolutely bear that in mind for later. In fact, why don't we just build a couple of uh, Tesla coils here? Uh, how much range does this have? Can just one of them supply all three of these? I think it can. I'll just leave that there as a reminder. Um, but I think... Uh, Is it night time? I think it is night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's night time. It's a little harder to tell on the snowy planet. And with our lighted power poles everywhere. Tesla uses UPS. Be careful. Really? Is it going to be that bad if we just have the one here at the station? Use it for initial charge? That's a thought. Uh, I think we'll be fine. Like, overall, we should be able to keep up with the solar panels um, quite easily. Don't forget the uh, the personal roboports have an insane amount of storage capacity. That's why they take so long uh, to charge. Alright, can we get more solar? Pretty please? Uh, looks like we already have it. Oh, am I not requesting it? That's probably... That's probably why. Solar... And it's right here. There's, there's only four? No, nope, I missed it. Oh, it didn't refresh, but I think... Yeah, there's more up here. Okay, cool. Alright. We're gonna put in lots of solar. And we'll see if nine robot ports is enough. 
for the reach that we want. I'm thinking yes. Is that all K2 stuff? Yes, indeed it is. Uh, I think the I think K2 included the equipment grid because I, I do have a mod. I, I have used a mod called uh, Vehicle Equipment Grid, but I didn't include it this time. Uh, I think K2 did that. Alright, so our robot ports are charging. Um, I don't see... Oh, that's, that's probably why there's no bots in here. I'm pretty sure I need to go and bring some more robots as well. So we'll go get some from the old mall. Robot. Uh, they're all in the robo ports. Okay. That makes sense, I guess. Uh... And my bots are stealing them away again. Never mind. Wait, does that mean... Yeah, there we go. Uh, I want to come back with at least four stacks. One for me, three for the train. Is solar panel in equipment affected by planet slash moon slash orbit? For some reason, no. That's why I'm using them here. They're kind of overpowered considering we're on Hagen. Uh, but yeah, if that wasn't the case, Tesla coil would definitely be the way to go. Like, no contest. Alright, so we have our bots. We have belts and starters, uh, power poles, rail signals, rail things, pipe, storage tanks, assembly machine, chemical plant... I don't see chemical plants in here. There's... Oh, we're waiting on delivery cannon chests before we move on to putting chemical plants in. Okay. Uh, it's not like we need more than a few. So I'll set that to eight for the moment because that's how many we have. And now we're trying to put in wind turbines. I don't think I put wind turbines in... Uh, in our autocrafter. Howdy. Howdy, Blue Lightning DT. Thank you very much for the resub. Ten months, very much appreciated. Thank you. Twitch baby plus one. Uh, it's going to take up to 30 seconds for this to switch over. No, I think it already did switch over. Oh, there it is. Uh, that's going to give us wind turbines. Do we not have copper cable? I don't think we do have... We do have a request for copper cable, but... Uh, I don't think we're making it here right now. So let's get that sorted. Less than 200 and shift right click, shift left click. How possible do you think SE is again without circuit networks? I don't know. I've never thought about, like, I take them for granted, so I don't think about could I do this without a circuit network. I'm sure. Hmm. Considering that you can make logic gates with trains, theoretically, there's probably a way. No, I, I'm pretty sure you could. Pro probably. It'd be an interesting challenge. It'd take a very long time to bump up against something 
uh, that starts to give you an idea of whether or not it'd be doable. Rocket sections would be awful. Arcospheres without circuits? Oh boy. Oh boy. Are there cliffs at Hagen? Uh, yes. There aren't very many, though. Meloxyl, LSF. Uh, pink pajamas. If I didn't say so, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And our junior, welcome, welcome, also. Is needed to change something on mod settings for LTN network? Uh, yes, I very strongly recommend, if you're going to use LTN, uh, go into the mod settings, and if nothing else, have a thorough look at them. Uh, because the mod set the default mod settings for LTN are a trap. Um, it will cause trains to come back to the depot filled with items. Um, or even if you have a train limit of one... It'll send trains over and over again at a station if something's wrong. Uh, trains, are cons uh, trains are just assumed destroyed after 10 minutes. So it'll send further trains. And all sorts of things like this. Or AO, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. At least the rocket section loading is pretty trivial. If you can't check if there's a hundred cargo rocket sections in the cargo rocket, doesn't that mean it's going to fill up with cargo rocket sections? Your train needs cliff explosives, that's a good point. I'll, I'll add those to whichever one of these chests is going to be... Uh, least full. Probably. Why do we only have two... Oh, I think all the wind turbines were given to me. Yeah. Let's give those back to the train first. Perfect. And now we're looking for... Uh, oil refineries. Do we not? I'm sure we have those automated. Maybe not. Yeah, no, I don't think I automated oil refineries and chemical plants yet. Um, let's put those on their own thing. Perhaps. 50 chemical plants and 20 oil refineries. I guess what you'd have to do is constantly insert and filter out rocket sections. Oh boy. I guess, yeah. Also, we need to drop off stone, trees, coal from the train. Uh, yes, that's why when the train comes back, it empties itself. Um, unfortunately, by adding more uh, cargo wagons, uh, our system that we figured out for having inserters remove stuff that doesn't belong doesn't work so well. So we're probably just gonna... Oh boy, how often are we gonna empty this train every time it comes back? Even so... Uh, it's going to be really nice having, like, a kind of fire and forget uh, to build this stuff. Let's give it some uh, oil refineries. Are we making any more? We are. Fantastic. Is pipe allowed in here? Pipe is allowed in here. But I... Nope. It's just straight up allowed in here. Okay, cool. Your train needs cliff explosives. Yes, it does. Alright. I think we're done loading it for now. Let's add cliff explosives... Uh, probably to this one. And 
And I don't think we actually have it manufactured here at the moment. You just have filtered inserters that look for wood, stone, and coal. That might be a good point, actually. Yeah, I think I think I agree with that. Because uh wood, coal, and stone. Because most of the time that's all we're gonna be removing. This is how you don't overthink things. Can you update the blueprint book for SEK2? Uh, sure, we'll get that done today. Um, but let's test this thing. We've got not that many bots. Wait, where did the bots go that I brought back here? How many construction bots do we have in this network? A hundred? I don't think we need a hundred. Let's just steal all of these. Uh, and what are we at now? Zero. Okay. Give it back. Are we requesting bots here? We are. I'm not exactly sure how... When I had bots in my trash slots, uh, we didn't end up with 50 in each of the trains. We shouldn't have ended up with any of them in the construction bot network because we don't have something to automatically put them back in. How... How are we not trying to put bots in here right now? Construction bot. 50. Construction bot. 0. There's 34 in here. Don't know why it's only 34. What the? So we've got 52 construction bots in this chest. Our request for construction bots is 50. It has the same wire connections as all of our other requests. Is it not looking at the train total? Oh, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's tricky. It's looking at the train total, not the wagon total. So we're going to end up with 50 bots per uh, the whole train. Let's see, 34 plus 16 is exactly 50. Hmm. They should end up equal if the train comes back here empty and there's bots waiting for them. Uh, but... That's still not ideal. You know what, I have to, I have to see. It's gonna create a lot of jobs for bots, but... I have to confirm it. So we're gonna dump everything. We're gonna come back to our... loading system. No, because it's not going to load construction bots first. If, if it loaded the construction bots first somehow, like if we had a priority system, 
uh, then it would load the construction bots in sync, uh, and therefore we'd end up with 50 in each. Assuming that there's 50 available. Well, no, we'd end up with the same number in each. I'd have to set it to 150 for the whole train. Hmm. Well, if we end up with like a third in over stack in each, it's probably okay. Andy Gaming, Eraser Chip, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It's, yeah, it is looking at the train total. We can't actually get it to look at the wagon total specifically. So now we're going to end up with 50 bots in just this one. I think we should just have a dedicated loader for the bots specifically. Um, would probably be the easiest and most reliable way to do this. So we're going to have... Uh, stack inserters. You know what? We're going to have more than enough time to load one stack of bots. Let's use, like, a uh, fast. Actually, it's going to end up with a stack size of three. You know what? Stack size one. Why not? Can't go wrong this way. And we're going to go construction bot. 50, and then take the bots from here, uh, and, and then stop, 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 uh, probably a red wire so this doesn't conflict. before we even think about how that would happen. And then we're just going to say... We don't even need a constant combinator. Uh, construction bot... less than... 150. For the entire train. So if there is 50 bots in each of these, by the time the train comes back. Uh, if not the first stack, it'll be like the second stack in each cargo wagon. We'll have construction bots. Oh no, no, the insert is sticking out on this one. Uh, also, I didn't set the conditions on these two. Alright. Now, once we do this... Now it should be in the correct initial state. Okay, so we immediately start putting construction bots in, uh, and we do that perfectly in sync, and we stop when there's 150 construction bots in the train should be as simple as that. So you can see the second stack in each cargo wagon has construction bots. And that is 50 each. Is it a requirement to have bots in each wagon? Uh, yes it is. Yeah. Uh... They're, they're going to act like separate entities. It's, it's like three separate vehicles. This is why I gave up on it. Bots also get stuck if the inventory fills up with Garbo. Yes, indeed. We're going to leave some room for that very reason. Uh, I need to get cliff explosives. Among... And not to mention construction bots. Automated in this place. We could actually make flying robot frames here. And we'll put construction bots up here. Uh, let's see, bots. Say a hundred. 
and a hundred and flying robot frames Uh, 200. Are we getting our refineries? Yeah, we're just not making enough pipe to easily pivot to that. Let's go for a thousand pipe. And I think I will allow all of it. To be in our buffer chest. Let's even set that up to 1500. Oh, this only requests 100. That wouldn't help. Okay, cool. I think we should probably be making pipe um, outside of the autocrafter, though. Just for the sheer volume of regular pipe and. I guess we may as well do underground pipe here as well. It's not really necessary though. And then limit pipe twenty four hundred. Whoops. And half of that for underground. Okay, cool. Shouldn't have any problems making uh, oil refineries next time. Alright, so there's our flying robot frames getting made. Didn't these things used to need lubricant? You could reserve some cargo slots for the bots to avoid any causes, cases where they can't be loaded. Uh, yeah, but I've got it set up so that... Um, I mean, we can do that as well. Can I copy-paste like that? I can. Nice. Okay. Uh, but even so, when the train comes back empty, uh, construction bots start getting loaded immediately. Um, two reasons I set it up this way. So that they start getting put in straight away, despite whatever is getting loaded here. Uh, and so that they get loaded precisely in sync, so that we can be sure we've got the same count in each. Uh, each cargo wagon. Okay, uh, are we done playing with this for a sec? I don't see any oil refineries. We're still waiting on these wind turbines? It's weird, I thought I... I thought I made sure we had enough before. Oh, because we emptied the train and then the bots gave the wind turbines to me as a priority. That's why. Uh, it looks like we're done loading. Alright, let's test this thing. Uh, we've actually got the roboports all powered up now. Let's see how much it can build of our network here. Uh, wait for 60 seconds of inactivity, actually. Before coming back. That is beautiful. I love everything about this. How much reach does it have? Most of the way across. We really would have to add a ludicrous number of roboports to have it reach uh, all the way across in one go. Jok uh, Jokub Jokubka? 
Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And then we'll move them down here after this one. Uh, inactivity, 60 seconds. This could actually be like a lot shorter because the bots are going to have time to catch up after the train moves down here. How much inactivity do we get? It actually doesn't get to like five seconds. Um, it looks like. I'm going to try five seconds for this one. That is so cool, though. We need more huge storage tanks because uh, oil block requires a very large number of them. Uh, 45 to be precise, which is more than double what we asked for. So now it's going to go back to uh, the emptier. And then it's going to park itself at the loader. So it's going to totally reset its inventory. Cool. Very cool. I'm sure there's a couple of little refinements we can make, but uh, it is basically working. Very, very nice indeed. Still spamming flying robot frames. We're doubling it at the moment, actually. I need more iron beams. We're not actually making iron beams here. That might help. Uh, Mendelevby, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Iron beam. Iron plate. Limit to... I don't know. Half a chest, just in case. I don't think I even had the autocraft trying to make iron beams. Is this really the first thing that we've added to our autocrafter that uses iron beams? Surely not. Maybe we just happen to run out around about now. Cool. Uh, are you loaded up on large storage tanks? Yes, indeed. Is there anything else missing up here? I don't think so. Three combinators. Uh, let's add those down here. Combi, combi, and combi. Fantastic. That's so cool. Alright, let's park our train about here. Five seconds of inactivity is probably enough. And I might send it back uh, straight back home. Because I think we probably will only really need to empty everything like this if the bots pick things up. And even then, not necessarily. Hold on, you don't have the vehicle roboports? Uh, I do. We've got like nine uh, vehicle roboports for each... Uh... Oh, sorry, personal roboport mark two. We've got nine of those for each cargo wagon. And... 
we didn't get those constant combinators built. Oh no. Could you go back to the top, please? And make it like 15 seconds of inactivity, just to be sure. That should be fine. Oh, also... Oh, I should have thought of this. That's one more reason that we might want it to unload everything whenever it comes back here, because uh, if the... How did this happen? Probably because I turned the train around. Uh, if the train flips around so that this cargo wagon becomes this one, uh, it's going to seriously mess things up. So yeah, we might really want it to... It looks like it's going to be fine this time. I don't think there's a way to programmatically make it turn the train around. But yeah, if it if it did turn around, it would have been trouble. Okay, cool. 52, 50, how did this happen? Hold on, you don't have... Oh, never mind, sorry. Okay, uh, I think we'll take a little break there. Um, you know what, why don't I send it to the emptier just to be absolutely sure. Moin, welcome, welcome. BG Nyman, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Uh, we'll take a little break here and do some words on stream. And I'll be back in a few minutes. Just a couple of levels of words on stream. If it wants to load today, there we go. Morning. Tiny Goliath, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, we'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
Okay then. Uh, I think I do want to add more robo ports here actually. Because the overall rate that we're going to consume power with this is going to be quite low. And we really want that range on the RoboPorts. And they have insane storage capacity as well. Whoops. Alright, are we done with words on stream? Fantastic. Nicely done. Good timing. All right, so we have, uh, doesn't really show it as I mouse over this. Uh, construction ray area is 155 by 155. If we have nine big portable solar panels. That's probably going to be pretty good. Robot Wars, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Crazy Heather, Carb user, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Alright, can we build something else just for funsies? Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a couple of other rail blocks that we've already got designed that we need to add. I just can't necessarily remember what they are right now. Let's have a browse, shall we? Uh, we've already got red, green, and blue circuits. Uh, we've got electronic components. Processing. Uh, I could do heat shield LDS. Just to be less dependent on Nalvis. But I... Oh, explosives? Have, have we got explosives? That's what I was going to put up here. Okay. Now I finally remember. Uh, how thirsty is explosives, though? I think I may have looked at that and concluded... Oh, it doesn't matter that much where we put it. Let's check our build on Nalvis. Uh, for explosives. And max rate... It's only 120 water. It's fine. So we can basically put explosives wherever we want. Um, how about... Probably relatively close to the mall since we are going to be using them. There's so much iron in the way. Oh, I haven't even tapped this one yet. Oh no, medias are getting through. Do we still have ammo? Uh, we do. It's probably a power problem. Or was a power problem. Okay. Where are we going to build explosives? Uh, could I maybe put it here and fix the rest up later? Uh, actually, yeah, I can just fit it here directly. That's nice. Alright, add tag explosives, and go. And let's see if our construction train can get it done in one. I also wanted to fix these, uh... Oh, actually, if I park it here, it should be able to get all of that done in one go anyway. Assuming it has the reach. Let's go inactivity 10 seconds. See how that looks. It's not even getting close to like two seconds of inactivity. But I'm guessing there will be moments when the bots are moving. When there's bigger gaps. Boovim. Budgie bum, triple, uh, triple exposer, welcome, welcome, good to see you again. 
Hope you're doing well. Don't you have explosives? I remember you making them. Uh-oh. Build a cinema and a restaurant? Explosives. Uh... Oh, you're joking. Yeah, we do. Okay. Alright. Well, it was a good test. Uh, can we just remove that? There's probably already a train picking up whatever goes into explosives, though. Um, I think they're just going to drop off to you the existing explosives. It's probably fine. We didn't we didn't have chemical plants though, and we did replace uh, we did fix those wind turbines. That's good. Um, all right. In that case, could we decon all of this? Um, I did say before, but it might be good to have a train specifically for deconstruction. That might be very good, actually. Uh, but yeah, didn't we have requests for uh, chemical plants over here? We did. Just didn't get them all yet. Or I guess it was trying to load something else before the plants. Uh, in that case, what should we be building? I thought there was like two or three things that we needed to build. Uh, did we actually build Big Electric? We did. Uh, so we got all of this. All of this. Uh, I haven't done lithium batteries. I want to double check something. Lithium ba battery. Oh yeah, no, that definitely goes into a few things that are going to be high volume eventually. That's fine. Uh, get out of here, you. Lithium battery. I think if we can squeeze it in here, we'll do that. Nope. To it here instead. Oh, there's iron in the way. Uh, we could keep that rail out of the way for the moment. Remove ghosts. Fantastic. Alright, let's see how our train is doing. It is not loading chemical plants. But it should be right about... Oh, it needs five more refineries, and then it will load chemical plants. So how... So we're still struggling to make refineries. Every time I look here, there's not enough pipe. Uh, for the refineries. I, th I guess it all goes into chemical plants or something. Didn't we make a dedicated machine for pipes? It's still not enough. We are requesting pipe over here. 1,000. On the way, zero logistic storage negative. Where is the pipe going? Oh. Oh, it's all going into underground pipe. Well, there's your problem. Let's set these limits a bit less aggressively. And... Uh, this one's probably fine, actually. Oh no, I've got a better idea. Instead of changing that, what I should have done is say that we have to have a certain amount of pipe in the robot network before we steal some to make underground pipe. Uh, 
Don't forget to add tag for explosives. Uh, good point. Thank you. Explosives. Okay. And that right there is going to be lithium batteries. Nice. Still waiting on refineries, which are waiting on pipe, which are... Why are we requesting 450 pipes here? That seems excessive. There we go. I guess the requested chest has higher priority. So it's going to have to play catch up. Can we get some speed modules? Never enough pipe. And iron beam as well. That'll probably help. Still waiting on those refineries. Three on the way. We need five, I think. Two more. On the way, three. Uh, nine, actually. Fantastic. And then that's chemical plants. Hmm, I could do... I will do. If S from all of these is equal to zero, uh, then we know our train is loaded. And... I'd like to add colors, but I don't want to have to add another combinator for that. Uh, S equals zero. Oh, that means we're fully loaded. Uh, let's try going to build our uh, lithium batteries. Inactivity five seconds. I want to try this now. Since that's the default, it's like a couple fewer clicks. Yes. Yeah, I don't think we're going to hit five seconds of inactivity here. Oh, and it does cover the whole block. Or at least as much as, as we care about. That is beautiful. It's going to be so much easier building these blocks from here on out. Yay, indeed. We're still not creeping towards five seconds of inactivity. Even though... Oh, there's like lots of chemical plants here. That would have been seven, eight stacks to get this done in one. Uh, although I'm surprised this loader didn't get made. Oh, yes, it did. That's so cool. I might just go and finish those few chemical plants myself. And we can do... We could do mining outposts with the construction train as well. 
Although, if we're going to have them, the, the train itself build the rail out as it goes, that's going to be a pretty awkward. Oh, we need even more chemical plants? Damn. Okay. I could set up a notification to tell us when the train is ready to go. Instead of just this light, uh, I could set it so that, like, when we go from something to nothing with S, it'll it'll give us a little doop a doop. Let's see if we can do that. Uh, so it's it needs to be something like. Gonna take at least two combinators though. Let me think about this. Constant combinator for testing. Uh and then if we received a signal last tick, but not this tick. Then we want an output. It's probably going to be something like this. So if S greater than zero, output one S. Or how about one green signal or something. And then if S greater than zero, output one S uh, one green signal again. And then uh, if this is one, let's jump into the editor so that we can step through it one tick at a time. So we're going to pause, we're going to turn this off, step forward a few ticks, so there's nothing, is this powered? Yeah, it's powered. Alright, so we're going to go S1, uh, input signals S1, output green, input signals, oh, this does need to output S. Derp. Let's reset that. Okay. Step through S input, S input, S output, S input, S is one, S is two, and S will remain to be two. And I guess if S is one, Hmm. But that means we're going to get S1 when this switches on or when it switches off. Uh, what I want is only when it goes from 0 to 1. I'm sure there's a way to do that, but... Uh, I might need a third combinator. And just do like this in parallel. So each times one, I'll put each. Uh, step through this. One S going into both of these, one S going out of both of these, one S on the lighted substation, uh, one S coming out of here, two S on the lighted substation. So what happens when we switch it off? One input, zero output, this is two, this is two, this is one. 
This is zero. I think this is the same problem, right? One to two. Yeah. It just takes more combinators this way. I could have sworn I solved this problem another day, but... Uh, for the moment, it eludes me. If we do it that way, we're going to get... Oh, I, I don't have undo levels here now. Uh, if we do it that way, we're going to get a notification when the train is ready and when the train gets back here. Which is probably fine, actually. Why don't we just do that? So, a pair of deciders. Maybe I should stop trying so hard to... fit it all under this uh, substation. Arbitrarily. Uh, we need a red wire. And a red wire. And a green wire for output from both of these. I think that's it. If s greater than zero, output one s. And we're basically going to say when s equals one. So, whoop, wait, no, 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 no. So when this uh, switches on or switches off, um, we should get the, the doop a doop. Did you filter the wagons? Uh, nope. Well, unless you count construction bots, which it's probably not strictly necessary, but I do like having them in the same spot. How do we have extra construction bots? Bad. So when the train departs, we get that noise. When the train comes back, we'll get that noise. And when the train is fully loaded, we'll get that noise. I think. I think that's what will happen. Oh, we didn't get a dupe a dupe when it started. Twenty two minutes until coronal mass ejection on Nalvis. Uh let's have a little peek real quick before this loads. We should have plenty yeah, we're full on steam for this. This'll be fine. All right, we've got quite a few things to load. Once we're fully loaded, this light should go, should switch on. And only at the moment that it switches on, we should get the doop a doop. I don't mind getting a doop a doop when the train leaves, if the only other one we get is when it is fully loaded. That That's... Totally fine. We should have everything we need to load the train as well. There it is. That's cool. Uh, what sound should we go with? I'm thinking the... It's hard to describe. It's like a... A roll... It's not under drum kit, is it? I don't think so. It's one of the distinct Factorio sound effects. Not that. Console message? No. That's the one I'm thinking of. Scenario message. Alright, cool. Global playback, don't bother with show alert, I'll know what this means. 
uh, whenever we hear this, it'll either because we just told the train to go somewhere manually and we know what that's about, or it'll be because the train is ready for the next go. Okay, what are we building next? Uh, there's actually a few chemical plants missing from here, so let's get that done. And five seconds of inactivity. And I don't think it really needs to go to the rail unloader for this one. Because it should come back facing the same direct... Maybe not, actually. I think it'll come back... Arse first, if that makes sense. This will become the front. Yeah, so we do need to get it to... Go to the emptier this time. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure there's no way to make sure that it comes back facing the same direction. So we'd... I mean, if it did come back this way, I guess we'd end up with a few chemical plants in the cargo wagon that has all of this stuff, which wouldn't be a problem at first, but eventually it would be a problem. Probably. Okay. Um, are we just about ready to plant? Is this thing busted? Nope, it's fine. How's our power? It's good, actually. Are we just about ready to plan and go to Granis? Or maybe I should go back to Nalvis first. Actually, I kind of want to set up a cargo rocket in this block before we do that. I, I want a cargo rocket that's loaded by... Uh, by the bot network here. And I also want... everything that's in this uh, bot network to be offered to the rail network. Also, can we move the lubricant input over this way? Might be good. Where's our pipe? Here it is. Uh, actually, can we pump it like this? Stop requesting lubricant on this side. And we'll probably make this station up here, uh, the pickup from this bot network. Which means we're not going to be using uh, bulk loaders. The only way to make sure it always comes head first would be to make the train single headed. But that makes another bunch of problems. Um, yeah, it would have to, if I made the train exit this way, actually, this, I, I, I never thought I would see the use case, but this might be it. Uh, if we have, uh, this would be the one train that isn't double headed, or at least one of the few. We'll have a single headed train. Um, it should be able to get wherever it needs to without the roundabouts, right? Uh, w w with the roundabouts, but like just just going by left-hand drive? I might seriously consider that. And then we can have four cargo wagons, uh, which is going to make it not any more difficult, actually, to fit all this. 
So we'll have one of these here, and we'll have a bulk rail unloader here. Uh, the train comes in from the right, facing left, does the unload, does the load, and leaves in this direction. The only question is if there's any trouble with getting a train uh, that isn't double-headed to reach certain destinations with these rail blocks. But I think it's probably fine. An extra rail for rail building would be useful, indeed. How does it leave the stations? Uh, it just... it just leaves. Oh, you mean when I make it single-headed? I'm gonna have rail go out this way. So it'll have to go... onto the roundabout in a counterclockwise direction. But once we're on a roundabout, we can exit in whichever direction we want. Yeah, that should be totally fine. Jota, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, why can't I... Oh, this is facing the wrong way. Whoops. Okay. So we have a train... Uh, it is single header, it's on the right side of the road this time, and yeah, like, well, if we were to send it, like, if we had a single piece of rail sticking out somewhere, because we just wanted to get a bit of rail over to a mine or something, uh, then that would pose a problem. But as long as everything is all loops uh, and so on, uh, this should actually be totally fine. Whoops. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. I don't need you to actually drive there. I can see where you can get just by using the preview. Cool. And that means uh, we only actually need to bother to empty the train on the occasion that, you know, something's a bit off. I'm liking this a lot. Uh, however... Hmm, it might have to be left to right. Which is going to be a pretty big headache to move around. Unless... I don't think I can move that forward that much. One, two. This would still be in the way of... Uh, the requester warehouse. We could just remove this head for now. Wait, why did the inserters just start swing? Oh no. Uh, I think the moment I removed the locomotive, uh, the train was no longer technically stopped at this station. So they started overloading it again. Uh, but yeah, that should work fine. I'm, I'm sure there's probably a good way to squeeze this in so that we can have both of these stations with four cargo wagons. Possibly by having the train go left to right, because then the station could be on this side. Uh, and we could still have the requester warehouses up here. Yo T-Hacks, Rubberband Rambo, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. The right pump up there has no power. Uh, probably, yes. Let's get a sub up here. And what a mess of cables. 
Can we not do it like that? There we go. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Um, I'll just persevere with just the three cargo wagons for now. That's still pretty good. Um, I might play around with how we're going to fit this in the editor later on. But I'm pretty sure we're probably going to have rail going from left to right. Um, so that we can put the train stops on the opposite side. Okay. So, is this empty? Yes, it is. Let's just remove that. This as well. Hmm. This would probably not line up the way I thought it would, actually. Never mind. Uh, so, we were going to do a uh, logistic network to LTN loader. Uh, and I think I'll just do that for short trains, so that we can just have one um, cargo wagon. We're going to do a requester... Well, I could do a 6 by. I think I will do a 6 by for this one. So does anyone have an option, op opinion on mixed cargo wagon trains? If you start needing quite a lot of different materials, uh, it depends, is the short answer. It very much depends. Uh, and we're going to have rail here. Once again, we're going to have... Six uh, stack filter inserters. We're going to need to let's do provider mole. We're going to need a robo port to read what's in the robot network. We let LTN know that's what we've got. We set the train length to one. Uh, we set it to three, so one cargo wagon. And then we read from the logistic train stop output. Uh, that'll tell us in positive numbers what the train came here looking for. Let's move this stuff. Can I... Not quite. Let's put this down here for now. Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Where are you taking that? Interesting choice. Oh no, the bots from the train are taking it. Oh no. Disaster. Um, yeah, I don't actually have any construction bots. Actually, there might be some in the network by now. Not just yet. How many more construction bots do we have back here? Uh, a hundred. Let's go grab another fifty or so. And can we stop requesting so much belt now? Actually. Good gravy. Give my dreaded C block save another try. Good luck. Jack Hell, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You have bots on the wagon of the train and therefore it acts as a robo port. I don't understand that part. Uh, it's the the vehicles, uh, the cargo wagons themselves have equipment grids. 
that's what that's about. Unfortunately, I can't foresee how we could have the roboports disabled while the train is at the station. Hmm. Enable logistics while moving. I don't think so. Yeah, that's a conundrum. Uh, I might have to... I might have to have this supplied and loaded away from the mall. So we'll put it in a separate block somewhere. Use automation wire? Uh, for what? Anyway, before we get distracted, I'm going to go grab some more parts. Give me another 50. I think they're all over the place. Yeah. Let's just take all the construction bots from here and then sort it out afterwards. two stacks of construction bots here. It still says... Oh, there's exactly 50 in the robot network, so I should have... I'm missing one. <laughs> construction bot. Refresh. Oh. That's 50. These are the only construction bots on the planet, actually. Uh, as far as in storage goes. Oh, there it is. We've got 100. Alright, so I'll drop 50 back into uh, the mall network. And my bots are running away from me. Okay. Okay. Shouldn't have allowed them to do that, actually. Can we get a stack in here? There we go. Now then. We read from the robot network and send that to LTN. We have a provide threshold, not a request threshold. Short trains only. And then we need to read from the logistic train stop output minus uh, what's already in the train. So we'll have a arithmetic. Are we going to build this today? Apparently not. Uh, Uh, stuff everything, everything the L LTN is asking for, minus what is in the train. That's going to be read train contents and nothing else. Each times negative one. Output each. And then we're going to do the anything signal thing again, just like we did downstairs. Or to the south slightly, actually. So we're going to go anything greater than zero output, anything input count, and then anything greater than 72 to decide if we're going to use the other five uh, decider combinators. So that first one is going to go... 
set filters, set stack size. Uh, let's see. How did I get the stack size again? Each times one output S. It's an arithmetic. Okay. Okay, so our first signal is our filter here, and that times one output S is our stack size. Uh, if we have more than 72 that we're trying to put into the train, uh, we're just going to allow all of these to be maximum stack size set filters whitelist. And I'll just double check that's what I did down here. Set filters whitelist, no stack size restriction. Easy enough. Alright, let's get a substation pylon placed right about there. And we need to request uh, whatever the logistic train stop output is asking for as well. And I think we should empty this uh, whenever there isn't a train here. I wish we could just read how full this is, like how many stacks are still available. Uh, and then I would simply empty it if we're getting full on something. But uh, I think we'll just, whenever there is no train at this station, uh, we're going to empty this. And the, re the set requests is going to be empty as well until the train actually arrives. Uh, I could set it up so that... Give me a buffer chest. Oh, the construction bots are busy again. Uh, okay. Let's give him a hand. Get the logistic bots involved. Alright. Uh, if everything greater than zero, or anything greater than zero, if we're still trying to put anything into the train, wait, no, less than or equal to zero, if we're still trying to put anything into the train, stop shoving things out of the requester warehouse. Seems good. We're going to get a few items stuck here, though. Maybe we should use an inserter for this one. The overall rate that we need to cycle these things is not going to be that high. Okay, so if... Everything less than or equal to zero. Yeah, I think the anything signal would have been wrong there because anything is false if there are zero inputs. Uh, so I don't really have a something to test it with right now, but that should make hmm. 
Hmm. Provide stack threshold 40 is going to mean 40 stacks of any one resource. Uh, I don't think we want to go that far. I could just set this to 1. We'll see how it goes. Um, but that should make the uh, blue inserters, for example. Oh, I think I do have something to test this with. Uh, we need blue inserters up, up here. 4k is exactly one train load, I think. Um, except we're looking for two cargo wagons. Seaforcat, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How was your stream today? may need to unload your build trains so your construction bots can return to the cargo. Uh, I think we did? Oh, maybe not. Right. Veldak, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I might just make a requester right here just to test this. So currently there's no dedicated, uh, there's, there's nothing except this if it's working, offering um, uh, offering blue inserters to the rail network. Uh, Raboot Gilmabaruk, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Here we can see the insane auto recipe mole. Indeed we can. It's currently making locomotives. Uh, it's trying to make construction bots, but apparently... I forgot to put the flying robot frame requester in here. Let's put it here. Whoops. Flying robot frames. Uh, say 200. And I need to add a whitelist for it somewhere. Flying robot frame 300. So if we end up with more than 300 flying robot frames in here, uh, it'll spit them back into the robot network. Cool. And I see we do have the frames. So once the recipes are trying to make construction bots again, it should be fine. Okay, uh, we are requesting short train. Uh, request stack threshold, let's say two. Fast inserter. We need 200 fast inserters. And there should be a delivery from here to here shortly. Um, that part should be easy. Like, even if we've made mistakes here, all we're doing is reporting the robot network to LTM for what we've got available. Provides threshold one, train length three. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. So why are we not scheduling a train yet? We have exactly one short train, and it is available. Hmm. Let's make sure we have the blue inserters. We have 199, 198, 197, okay. Uh, why don't we just request 150? And we should see those lights turn yellow shortly. I haven't heard the sound that indicates the train is ready to go. Oh, because we're still trying to cliff explode. There it is. Fantastic. What does it take to make cliff explosives? 
Uh, empty barrel explosives grenade. Grenade? Coal and iron plate. Uh, empty barrel is over here somewhere. So empty barrel is a prereq for this, which is to the right, so that's fine. Explosives we're bringing in from the rail network, or we will do. Grenade is a prereq for this, which is to the right, so we don't need any special rules for this. Uh, what we do need is to bring in explosives, which we haven't done just yet. So let's add a request for... Explosion. Uh, 2.5k should be fine. Where are our explosives here? Oh, it's under resources. Alright, where did I put that chest just now? Don't tell me that. No, don't put things in it yet. That's for explosives. How dare you. Okay. Uh, so this is working at least. We've got 2.5k explosives on the way. So are we one short? One short train? What? Is that the joke? Is this connected? It is. Request... Let's just go request threshold. Uh, SF Hobbit, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. I forgot to put this as a negative. Well, there's your problem. How was your stream today? All the raids? Yeah, back to back. SFH Hobbit. There we go. Alright, so short train is coming for fast inserters. Fast inserters are being put into the requester chest. Uh, something's wrong here. So we do have the 150 fast inserters signal. Oh, I forgot. We have to separate out these weird signals. Um, yeah. It's outputting... You know what? Since, since we haven't anything greater than zero here, all we need is to add one constant combinator to this. Um, so we're just, just going to have negative numbers for uh, these signals here that give us information on the size and shape of the train. So it is encoded positions of every locomotive. Uh, and two versions of that for some reason. And then same for the... Uh, cargo wagons. And we don't need to add, like, fluid wagons, because there's not going to be a fluid wagon coming here. Probably. At least not for now. Uh, and then we connect this here. And then the output signal of this is... I did something wrong. Oh, I see. This one. And this one. So we're basically just removing these signals by setting a very large negative number right before we have a greater than zero condition. We're looking for 150. We got exactly 150. It was loaded quickly. And there's our delivery. Um, I don't know if we got exactly 150 delivered over here. I didn't notice, but there was probably there were probably some inserters put into this purple chest. Trains go runny. I want pancakey, indeed. What kind of run did you? Yeah, any gimmicks? I want to see this one more time. Trains coming. 
nice and fast. We are requesting 150 fast loaders, or fast inserters. We're probably going to oversupply them. Uh, we're precise loading them quickly into the train. And we're left out with some more. They get shoved straight back into the robot network. As soon as the train uh, isn't here anymore, we're going to dump everything back into the robot network. Fantastic. That is working beautifully. So now everything that's in this robot network is available to LTN uh, via short trains. Setting up a mole to rail provider, indeed. Uh, this is still happening. I think what happened was I sent the train to the trash, em uh, to the train emptier. But the bots that belong to the train are still hovering over here. Okay, now they should be sorted. I think I should probably add an inactivity condition on this. I don't know how long. To make sure the bots can catch up. Because if the train is full and bots are trying to empty stuff into the train, the construction bots that belong to these cargo wagons, that is, um, they're not going to move until there's space in the cargo wagon. So they could be anywhere, really. This is... I'm really liking this. And I like how we've got... Uh, we found a use case for a single header train in our double header train network. It's very neat. Uh, did I fill out all of the grids? I believe so. Yes. Okay. Let's get back to building. And our train is ready to go. Nice. Uh, we last built uh, lithium batteries just because we could to test the train. I think we want to build a automatic cargo rocket supplying system now. And I think I'll put that over here. Nice and close to the mole. Um, let's see. Two, three, four, five. Train is ready to go. I thought we already heard that sound. Our bots are slightly oversupplied. Hmm. Maybe I should only aim for, like, 45 in each cargo wagon. Uh, so 135? Uh, let me double check that. 135, okay. Because for some reason we end up with a little bit extra from time to time. The train bots did the construction request. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was talking about this before. Um, if we want to avoid that, we're going to have to have this whole setup uh, somewhere else, basically. Like in a separate... Uh, in a separate block. Where the bots can't reach all of this. It shouldn't be that hard, actually, now that we've got, um, now that we've got a short train can pick up anything from this, uh, bot network. We could have a short train deliver all of this stuff 
and then we'll have a very, very small, very dedicated uh, bot network to control input and output from the train. Uh, any trash that belongs in the train will stay here. Uh, any trash that belongs back at the mall will find its way back. Uh, yeah, I have ideas for this. It's only an issue because you're currently working in the mall. This is true. And we can always, um, we can always fix it by just sending the train back to the emptier. And then it'll refill. Alright, let's get ourselves a cargo rocket silo. Somewhere around here. Uh, we'll need a... Requester station. If only for... Hmm. Yeah, I think that was because the bots jumped out. Uh, we'll need a requester station if only for the liquid rocket fuel. This, uh, this oil is bugging me. I should probably hurry up and put the oil from here into the rail network instead of having this pipe spaghetti. Especially because I think I would like to put this here. Well, we can remedy this easily enough. Boop, boop. On the other hand, I could put it here. So we can very quickly unload our liquid rocket fuel. And then cargo landing pad. Where, where did it go? Cargo landing pad. Uh, can maybe go here. Actually, we could have loads of liquid rocket fuel here. Since that's how that's going to fit together anyway. Uh, and then we want... Kind of like what we've been doing. Uh... We need another precise loading system. We could make cargo rocket sections using the ball, uh, using the auto crafter. Since it's all just solids. LDS, RCU, cargo pod, uh, iron chests, pump. Yeah, we could do this. I'll make it low priority. We're going to need an uh, iron chest. Say 50. Oh, not even. How much... How many iron chests go into this? I think it's one. Nope. It's four per cargo pod. Alright then. Let's go iron chest. 50 at a time. Uh, what was the other one? Everything else we've already got sorted. And pump. I don't think we have regular pumps. Oh, we do. We do have those lined up. Okay. So, iron chest. Uh, cargo pod. I don't know. How, what does a stack do? Ten. We'll do the prereqs to one stack. And then, Mago Rocket section. 
I'll just double check that with a crafting combinator, um, if we feed it a cargo rocket section signal. I, I think we need recipe, uh, crafting combinator recipes and cargo, cargo rocket section, recipe cargo rocks, rocket section. That's the alternate recipe there. So this one should just be the default. Nice. Are we bringing heat shield and LDS? We are. What about rocket control units? Rocket control units. I don't think I've requested those here just yet. And what does this stack to? 10. That's not a whole lot. So we'll request 500. You'll like side projects? I got side projects for my side projects, indeed. Yeah, we're chasing a lot of squirrels today, but we're doing a lot of cool stuff. Um, let's see. Rocket control units are coming. And I think... I think that's it. Alright, so naturally we're going to aim for 100 cargo rocket sections in the mall. And that's probably going to be, like, about the last thing that we make here. But that's okay. Uh, I'm surprised we don't have any cargo rocket silos, actually. Or did I just not... No, we do have the requests for them, we just haven't gotten to them yet. There is a lot of catching up to do, after all. This is the only thing I don't like about this prerequisite system, is we're down to our last thing that's on this side. So we have seven machines idle while we catch up with the flying robot frames. And then once that reaches its threshold, we're going to start wanting to craft all of this. But it's fine. Let's just handcraft one cargo rocket silo. I say just, but that's actually a pretty big undertaking. Uh, let's, I think we needed inserters, didn't we? Nope. A thousand steel, a thousand concrete. Uh, there we go. Concrete. Where be concrete? Here, here it is. Uh, there we go. And then 200 big electric motors, a bunch of blue circuits. Are we bringing blue circuits in? Yeah, we are. Oh, here it is. Uh, big electric. And then storage tank and radar. Radar is all in here, actually. Oh, and there's some storage tanks. Radar. And there we go. Fantastic. Okay, so then we're going to have probably another big requester chest. We'll probably use the same logic as we did with these other ones. To control fast but precise loading. We could detour and do static analysis 
on the minimum number of machines to not need a prereq system. Static analysis. Uh, I don't have the education to understand that. Um, but I have put a lot of thought into ways to do this prereq system. If you don't want to have too many combinators, this is probably about as good as it gets. Also, the flying robot frames are not going to be, in the long run, there's not going to be much throughput of these. Not coming from the mall, anyway. Uh, let's see... We need to request liquid rocket fuel here. Liquid rocket fuel. Uh, quite a lot. And I think we can actually reach this across. Nice. What I mean is look at all the recipes and find the number of recipes between desired and prereq to get the maximum distance. Hmm. So... So if I calculate how many of these we have left to go... Or... I wish I could ins I, I wish I could just like take seven of these and amend it to this in this use case. It's static analysis meaning we look and figure it out rather than do and find what fails. What is the facade in the bottom left? Facade in the bottom left. This thing? The the Mr. Tomato Man, nice name. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, is this what you're asking about? This is our construction train. Although it is currently having trouble because... Because we're building in our mall, the construction bots here are jumping out and doing things. The button next to your inventory. Ah. Uh, Button next to my inventory. Bottom left, you said. But bottom left? I... But do you mean bottom right? Surely not. Bot bar right. Uh, so we've got... Toggle RoboPort, Rate Calculator, uh, Toggle X-Ray Vision, that just makes trees. Uh, if we if we get close to trees, uh, it'll swap the models so that we can see what we're doing. Uh, then we've got Module Inserter, Search Recipe Book, which is kind of like... Uh, FNEI, but has different pros and cons. Calculator, uh, auto trash, pipe visualizer. This is a nice one. Uh, much, much, much easier to find our pipes with this. Uh, and then we've got factory search. Fourth, second, okay. Yes, yes, indeed. Okay, uh, so I think we're going to do the same thing here as we did before. Our train just said it's ready to go, but we do still have bots hovering over it. We need to empty it again. Yeah, I, I'm definitely going to have to build this stuff in a separate block from the mall. Uh, somewhere away from where we're regular regularly like building new stuff um we're gonna have the station that i built up here supply it and we're gonna have a nice small robot network 
Um, we can actually already put these things in logistic mode. Uh, let me just steal this. So, like, with Crastorio 2, uh, our roboports can be set to normal mode, which is just like vanilla. You get both logistics and construction. Uh, if we go construction mode only, it has more range. And if we go logistic mode only, um, I'm pretty sure that is less range. Yeah, yeah, it's less range overall, but it's more logistic range. Uh, unfortunately, I can't set uh, the vehicle or, or personal uh, robo ports to behave this way. Otherwise, I would, uh, at least for the moment, set these ones to logistic only so that they wouldn't build things. Rails are funny since they are 2x2 two two even grids help, but otherwise I recommend no rotation. Wait, what? Uh, Kelpel, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I have some issues with aligning my rail system to a grid. I made a cross section which is 70x70. 70 70. I'm going to create a straight section. It fits the first place, but when I rotate it... Yeah, I had to make two. So I actually uh, did something like this. Let's jump to the editor for a sec. So here's our rail block. And I wanted to have highway that I could paste. Uh, where did I put it? Down here. So I had to make two versions of this. Uh, for... This one snaps to the top left and uh, the top and to the left. Uh, I think. No, it looks like it's a bit off, actually. So I guess it actually only snaps on the left side. I probably need to make four versions of this. Um, although, no, I could just move it around like this, actually. Uh, and then this other blueprint that I called lower right doesn't actually snap to the right side. Yeah, you you want to not rotate it. Uh, I, I've got a blueprint for straight that does the north-south and one that does east-west. Uh, and I'm just going to rename them right now. North, south... East, West. Fantastic. We just learned something. Logistics only is when you toggled your personal RoboPort? Wait, what? Construction only is when you disable personal logistics and auto trash. Oh, but we've got uh we've got personal RoboPorts in the vehicles. Um that's the problem right now. HP Crusher. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And the only reason it's a problem, I could maybe just ignore it, because we don't actually build here that often, and then it's just like one click to fix it afterwards. But we do have to empty the train all over again to fix it uh, automatically. Uh, I don't have any rocket fuel. Okay, can we switch this on? Liquid rocket fuel... Quester, and I'm just going to label this as all cargo rocket silo, so we know exactly what's going on. If we see a train with that stop in its schedule. Alright, so I'm going to have some combinators to decide what I want to put in the cargo rocket. Uh, we're going to... Well, first of all, we're going to have some inserters that ignore all of that. Because we need a requester for the 
cargo rocket sections and or the uh, space capsule. So we're gonna go capsule, cargo rocket section, uh, let's see, can't do 50. If I wanted it to be one chest, it would have to be 4x4. Four four. That's a bit much. We'll just have the bots uh, bring the cargo rocket sections uh, more than once. And I want... I don't think the stack size matters, but just to show that brain is loaded, uh, just to show that this is nice and slow, we'll put that there. And I want a constant combinator for this one. We're going to read from... Let's put it down here where the wire will be short. Uh, and just to be very clear on what we're doing. Uh, stack size 1, not that it matters. We're going to read from the cargo rocket silo. And we're going to set filters blacklist. Wait, I don't think this is going to work actually. Because what about when we put other things in? Uh, I could set it so that this doesn't work until we have a working rocket. But we can't set filters and enable disable. What uses the fewest combinators for this? I wanted to set filters blacklist. And we're going to have... Uh, we, we don't actually need a signal for space capsule. Because as soon as we put one in, we don't want to put in any more. And for cargo rocket sections, uh, we want 99 extra put in before we blacklist that. But if we put in like more than a few types of things, we're going to run out of filters. And we'll start picking this up again. So it's probably easier if I just have two chests for these things. Rotation symmetry would work when there is an odd edge length, but you can't do that with rail, yeah. But if it's even, there's no center point to rotate one, indeed. Yeah, uh, it actually took me a while to realize that even though... If, if we actually try to put the offset dead center uh, for the snap to grid for a rail block uh, that doesn't work because grid position and blueprint grid coordinates need to be uh, all even or all odd um, but if this is just like offset a bit from the center it works just fine for snapping to a grid um All right, I'm going to stop trying to be quite so fancy with this one. We're just going to do a couple of chests here. Space capsule. And a couple of blue inserters. Brain is loaded. Oh, we just... the bots did the thing again. Uh, can we get some stuff delivered? And this is going to be cargo rocket sections. Some green wire. So we're just going to say space capsule less than one. 
and cargo rocket section less than 100. And then we actually want, what's that signal called? Rocket or something? Uh, cargo rocket. This signal means the rocket is ready to launch. Which is basically these two conditions combined. Well, maybe it includes fuel as well. Uh, but we don't want these swinging until we get the cargo rocket signal. But once we do uh, whatever we're trying to put into... Wait, we're just going to use the same logic as we had over here. These two. Oh, uh, these three, actually. So we do the anything greater than zero, output anything input count. That's going to pick one of these signals, if it's positive. Uh, that's going to go directly to this first inserter, which is also going to receive a signal from here. It's going to give it the stack size. Uh, each times one output Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, no, there's no signal contamination there. Uh, this times one output S for stack size. So whatever one thing we're putting in at the moment. Uh, but then if we're still trying to put in at least 72 of something, then we're going to enable all of these inserters with the same filter with no stack size limit. And then... Uh, that's sort of the easy part. I would like to set requests on this buffer uh, requester chest. And empty it. Once again, empty it if we're not requesting anything. That might not work as well this time, actually. Because we're going to request a bunch of stuff constantly. It's not like the train disappearing. And then if we change what we want to put in the cargo rocket, uh, there's going to be stuff left in here that's just accumulates. So this logic's going to be a little bit different. Um, I could always do set filters blacklist of whatever's supposed to be in this requester chest. But if we're looking for more than four types of things, that's going to be a problem. Hmm. I could do a... It, it's a really big chest. I could do a bunch of static requests for... whatever we might put in the cargo rocket. And then we could read... read contents. So that we could set requests to take things out of it. What I had last time, when we had nothing but small chests, was uh, a row of requesters, and then a row of active providers, and then this gets placed straight into the cargo rocket, um, and then when it doesn't, it just gets taken away. Uh, I guess we could do that. But, but that's going to complicate. Okay. 
Maybe it's not that bad. No, I think we're gonna have to have... I think it's going to look something like this. So whatever thing we're trying to put in at the moment, we don't need the stack size, we're not worried about that. Yeah, we're just going to shove whatever type of bots Repetitive beats. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I think I'll just connect this here. And we'll have the same settings except no stack size. That should work just fine. We're going to overload these chests with a bunch of stuff when we pivot from one resource to the next. But that's okay. Awesome cat. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, and I would like to empty this chest when certain conditions are met. Not sure what that condition is. Right. Let's get our constant combis. I should probably refer to my old design, but no, let's just try and figure it out. Uh, Tezcatlipoca, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I'm actually really liking the stone floor. I think it's much nicer than the concrete. Uh... Alright, let's try this. We don't actually need the cargo rock to be ready. Oh, we need some power here. Yeah, we don't actually need the cargo rocket to be ready to test this. Um, so let's have... Oh, we need to subtract what's already in the cargo rocket. Just like we do with the trains. So each time's negative one, that goes to here. Yep. It's pretty straightforward, actually. Each times negative one, output each. And let's say... Uh, I only want to pass this through if, if we get the ready to launch signal. So that's going to go to here. If launch, if cargo rocket, wait, wait, wait. If cargo rocket greater than zero, output everything input count. And that's actually a problem. It's gonna pass um it's gonna pass the contents of the cargo rocket silo. Hmm. Where do I squeeze that logic in? How do I minimize the combinator count? That's a good question, actually. I might have to go, like... 
like this. Feels like it should be unnecessary, but what can you do? So, if cargo rocket is ready to launch, uh, take all of this as an input and output everything. Oh wait, that's not quite right. If checkbox, uh, check mark greater than zero, output everything input count. So this combinator right here is how we don't pass through uh, the contents of the cargo rocket silo. I could also just output it like this signal. Yeah, I think I have to. Looks a little weird. Now then, let's pretend that the cargo rocket is ready to launch for testing. Arithmetic Combinator multiply on... multiply all on count of rockets ready. Uh, we'd have the same problem of passing through the values from here for what's in the cargo rocket silo. You're saying like multiply this times cargo rockets, right? I mean, I could do the exact same logic here, but with a uh, arithmetic. Uh, each times cargo rocket output each, right? Accomplishes the same thing. Uh, I would still need the extra combinator to not pass through the contents of the cargo rocket silo. What did I just undo? I think this is sort of a bit more intuitive to read. Uh, green wire. And then... Let's test that. So we're gonna have... 100 yellow belt. And I don't see the filters. Oh, it's outputting... Oh, no. Yeah, we're gonna have to have a combi in between. Just to remove the... Uh, cargo rocket signal. Unless I could use a different signal that's going to come after... I don't think I can pick an arbitrary output signal that's necessarily going to come after all of these things we're trying to put into the cargo rocket. Weapon delivery cannon capsule. Uh, sorry, weapon delivery cannon. Weapon delivery capsule. Because of the uh, item ID being very high, that's not gonna be the first thing that the anything signal picks up. Uh, but I really hate this for two reasons. Um, it doesn't look good and make sense. Uh, it's not easy to read. And I could be wrong about uh, that. There could be something that we put on the constant combinators uh, that turns out to be, you know, the anything signal will pick the the signal we just picked arbitrarily first. So here we're gonna have a constant combinator, which is going to simply remove 
If I go rocket. Make sure that's a negative on this green wire. And here we already filter by greater than zero. Whoops. Okay, so we are trying to load yellow belt. Um, and I think we will set requests based on that as well. And then the only bit of logic remaining, as far as I can think of, is uh, when do we decide to empty the requester warehouse? Oh, that's not great. We're going to end up with belts sitting in here when we're trying to end input just a little bit more. Any clue about why the bulk loaders doesn't want to load copper or iron plates? Oh, yes. Uh, it's a mod setting. I think by default they'll only move things like ore. That's all that is. Yeah, I remember last time we had some remainder logic. Uh, we actually had a row of requester chests. Uh, and we made sure that uh, if there was a remainder, if we divided by number of chests, the remainder went into this chest. Alright. I think we should just use the small chests and we should empty it whenever uh, Is this really what I had to do? Or can I perhaps Maybe these were not filter insiders. Yeah, maybe these should just be unfiltered, and anything greater than zero. Oh, I know, S greater than zero for the first one. No, S greater than zero for all of them, because if we're done... Uh, if we're down to the last few, we want what's in here to go into the active provider chests. Okay. So we are going to set requests on these buffer chests. We could do some math to make sure the last of these goes into this chest only. So it's going to be like, oh, it, it'll also determine how much should go in each of these request chests. Um, I seem to remember having a pair of these. So it's like each divided by six output each. Uh, as in a pair of pairs. Uh, divided by six and remainder six. And then having to have two more of these. But I can't remember why the latter would happen. So we're going to take the number of yellow belts, for example, that we're still trying to load. Uh, divide by six goes to all of them, and remainder six goes to this one as well, I think. And we're going to set requests.
each remain to six out of each. Oh, what are we doing? Oh, here it is. I connected that to the wrong thing. Uh, I think we want this green wire. So we're requesting exactly one belt and only into this one. Fantastic. And that gives us exactly 100 belt. Okay, so let's try... I should probably add a system to remove anything that's not supposed to be in here as well. Not just in case this messes up, I don't think it will, but also if we change our mind on what we want to put in this cargo rocket silo. Um, but for now, let's uh, let's prove that this works. Uh, 53? 74? Oh no. Oh wait, I thought I thought one of my keys wasn't working. It's just the numpad got hit. And we should end up with exactly those numbers in the rocket silo uh, cargo rocket silo. And then also it should all get thrown back into the robot network. Uh whatever extra got sent over here. That's weird. Oh, no, we're done. We're only requesting to this chest now. Seems good. So let's see. Uh, 123, 74, and 53. 123, 53, 74. Fantastic. Why are these signals... Why is blue belt before red belt with the output signals here? That's very weird. Oh, it's looking at the numbers. Right. It's ordering by by volume. Uh, but yeah, that's working well. Earlier you had 10, so it was easier to count. Uh, 10 of what? Any clue about why the bulk... Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Alright. Uh... So the only thing that's missing now is, well, for one thing, making some cargo, uh, what is it called? Uh, cargo rocket sections. But that's like one of the lowest priority things, um, for how this system works. Do we not have radars in here? Oh yeah, we've only got... It's bottlenecked on the one stack inserter. I'm going to change crafting combinator to... Um, 3600. So that'll only update once per minute. That should hopefully give uh, the system time to craft at least one... Cargo rocket silo. Since the inserters love to oversupply one resource at a time, so it's gonna it's gonna go for way too many big electric motors, and then too many steel chests, and then too many steel plate, and so on. Uh, but it is good to see we're up to making cargo rocket silos. Right after I handcrafted this one. It's fine. Now then. If we read from the cargo rocket silo and subtract... No, if we read from this and subtract what's in the cargo rocket silo... Uh, if, if there's something extra in there, we're going to get a negative for what doesn't belong, right? Already? Without adding any more logic? Oh, that's a lot. Um, here we go. Yeah, negative 10 solid rocket fuel. 
So I think what we want to do is simply... Uh, multiply by negative 1 and then do this again. should give us oh but first we have to remove these uh, L, F and E signals for example we need a anything greater than zero so I think we can just put a constant combinator here Uh, let's double check with the Informatron. Cargo rockets. E, F, L, and maybe these ones as well. Uh, we're just going to have to add, like, negative a million. For any signal that we don't want to deal with at this part. F... L, uh, what else? Liquid rocket fuel. Argo rocket. And I think that might have been it. Green signal can trigger a launch. Oh, that's an input. Output. E, F, L, cargo rocket signal. Space capsule. I think we can ignore that one, and the cargo rocket section as well. It should be... We actually don't want to ignore these, because they could be in the cargo rocket, and if there's extra, then we want to get rid of them. That should be fine. Okay, so here we have... Stack... S for stack size, 10, and 10 solid rocket fuel uh, is what we want to get rid of. And we just do like so. And that's going to put anything that doesn't belong here, or even anything that does belong here that we've got too much of, uh, back into... the network, um, but it's going to do it in a precise manner. So we've got a S for stack size signal that is the same amount as however much extra we've got here. Big brain? Thank you. What is that? Logic, indeed. Alright, I think that might be our auto-supplied cargo rocket. Uh, we're still waiting a little while on... I, I wish I could remember the idea I came up with for how we could make something like this oversupply more. So that when we switch to, like, uh, making... Cargo rocket silos, for example. We're going to have way more radars than we need. Because it stacks up like 80... Uh, it stacks up about 84 radars or something in the input for the cargo rocket silo in the assembly machine. It's pretty stupid. So then, of course, we go back to making prereqs, and all of this is on hold again. It's a little bit of a nuisance. I could put the radars just on the same... Yeah, I think I will. 
We're just going to put the radars on the same block as... Cargo rocket silos and landing pads. So the radar is a prerequisite for these and uh, is to the right of these two, but just the fact that we have eight assembly machines should be more than enough to sort that out. Oh, I see we've started on the cargo rocket sections. Do we have rocket control units here? I don't think so. Okay. Rocket control unit. Uh, say 50. And we need permission for it. Rocket control unit up to 100. And are we missing anything else? Iron chest. Fifty to one hundred. And I think those were the only two things that we have to add to make our... Oh, there was pump as well. If we don't already have that here. Which we don't. Okay, pump. One stack. Allow up to two stacks. And that should be all it takes to get some cargo rocket sections. Much more elegant than our last version. Although this wasn't bad. Um, this is actually quite nice. But to not need that at all is even nicer. That's a lot of cargo rocket sections as well. Okay, so we are up to 1% on this. Can we make space capsules without adding anything more? We need glass, solar panel, accumulator. That's the only thing. Uh, can we make accumulators here? I'm sure we can. Fantastic. All right, how many accumulators does it take to make a space capsule? Uh, 50. I could, again, put the accumulators next to the space capsules. And I think I might do that. I kind of want the accumulators to be pretty low priority anyway. For now. Uh, so let's aim for like... 500 accumulators. Space capsule. We're just aiming for one. I'm sure we'll end up accumulating some space capsules. Uh, and we need to allow accumulators here. And let's say up to two stacks. Can you update SEK2 book? Uh, yes, I will. Alright, we're already 8%. That's surprisingly good. All right, let's remove our, our, our testing signal. Um, oh. Oh, I didn't think of that. Wait. No, it's easy. Cargo. 
uh, sorry, space capsule. We're just going to ignore exactly one of those. And cargo rocket sections, we're going to ignore exactly 100 of those. It should be trying to remove belts that we've put in, though. Shouldn't it? Oh no, that's fine. That's actually better, actually. Than the behavior I was expecting. Okay. Uh, update the SEK2 book. Uh, export to string. Oh, wow. <laughs> Rip frame rate. Okay, good. I was a little afraid there for a second, so let's save it. And I'll toss that on the Discord. Discord is now shitting itself as well. Yeah, it's going to take a little while before Discord responds again. <laughs> Remind me in a couple of minutes if I haven't logged in. Uh, Alright, we're just waiting for cargo rocket section. Oh. Never mind. Uh, but yes, we are in fact just waiting for cargo rocket sections. Why don't I go and get some, since there's so many up here. It's actually just like a couple... It's like two and a half rockets worth of cargo rocket sections here. Um, let me just make some room in my inventory. And take that. Drop it straight in. And I'll go get some more. And we'll be ready to launch. By which I mean the rocket will be ready. And we have to make our shopping list. Fantastic. And the extra cargo rocket sections automatically got thrown back into the network. Cool. Uh, we're going to point this at Granis for the moment. And we're not going to have any trouble getting enough fuel. Nice. And now we just have to figure out what we're taking to Granis. Has research stopped? Uh, quite possibly. Oh, very, very likely. Uh, I think we're out of stone, actually. Yep. No, we've got 10k stone here. Are we not requesting? Wait, what's going on? Logistics, 0 out of 50. Uh, I think we ran out of storage space. That is not the problem that I was expecting. Hmm... Hmm. I don't suppose we have any chests. Oh, we have 48 storage chests that we're not using. Uh, that makes it pretty easy, actually. How many is this? 20-something? Okay. 
If you'd asked me before I looked why his research stopped, uh, that would have been not my first guess. Probably one of my last possible guesses. Uh, but yeah, it's now in motion. 10k stone, and it, one stone makes five rocket science packs. We're not running out of that anytime soon. Okay. Uh, what should we take to Grenis? Lots of rail, of course. Uh, let's get a really pro. Well, we can make more rail when we get there. Uh, there's lots of iron. Making steel would be a bit more of a problem. I'm not seeing... Okay, there's 14 million coal up there. There's not that many patches, but they're pretty rich. Uh, but it would definitely be better. It, it would be more convenient if we send enough steel to not run out while we're outposting. There's plenty of stone lying around, to say the least. 2.1k rail, is that all this is? Let's start with maybe 3k rail. And... I'm going to want to build a processing area here. I want to do the absolute minimum for an outpost. So it's basically just going to be ore mining uh, delivered straight to cargo rocket. Send cargo rocket back to home base. For that we're going to need to receive via cargo rocket uh, or we could receive things via delivery cannon capsule. But no, I think... What do we need to receive via cargo rocket? I want to set up uh, rocket fuel on planet. We don't have any water though. Oh wow, well, I forgot... Yeah, yeah. No, we're bringing ice. I remember now. We're going to be bringing ice. Uh, we'll make oil on planet. Or rather, we'll make a solid rocket, uh, liquid rocket fuel. Uh, so we need... Let's make a combi to list these things. Um... We're going to need to deliver ice, uh, media defense installation ammo, uh, this, this is the consistent throughput that we're going to need, to be clear. You missed some? What did I miss? Oh, for the estimation of how much rail we're going to need? Uh, we will, of course, need cargo rocket sections. We're going to need... A space capsule? I think. Yeah, we'll need a few space capsules. Space capsules, cargo rocket sections, ice, media defense ammo, and usual, like, some bots and repair packs just in case. Hmm. Uh, but that's our consistent throughput. 
Uh, that's not... That's not building an outpost kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to need a bunch of train stops and signals. Well, the signals are relatively easy to make. But we can take some to get started. On second thought, not really. We'll just start with one train. We really can mass produce the signals uh, really, really easily. It's literally just iron and green circuit. And green circuit is a bit more of a pain than vanilla, but not by much. There's plenty of stone. I think I would like to build an autocrafter as soon as we get there. So we definitely want to pack everything required for that. Why are they not loading any rail yet? We've definitely got the ready to launch signal. Input signals, cargo rocket. Cargo rocket greater than zero. Huh? Oh, I think I might understand. How we're getting a negative one. Oh, I th think I see the issue here. This is passing through the ready-to-launch signal as a negative, and then this is saying output 1, and then this is saying cargo rocket greater than 0. If I set it to not equal to 0, is that going to be okay? Actually, that would mean we don't need this part. Right? Each times negative one output each. Negative one ready to launch. If cargo rocket not equal to zero output everything input count. Yeah, I think we just saved a combinator. Perfect. Beautiful. Careful, don't want that rocket to accidentally launch. Uh, it's not going to accidentally launch. Launch trigger is manual. The ready to launch signal doesn't launch it. Uh, if you want to auto uh, launch it automatically, uh, you have a few options. So it can launch on cargo full. Uh, it can actually launch on fuel full. Launch on uh, those conditions plus green signal, uh, or launch on green signal or when cargo full. I, I think it should be implicit that fuel needs to be full. Uh, this should just say launch on green signal, but I guess, I don't know, I guess it makes it a bit more clear. Um, but yeah, you actually don't need any circuit logic. If you're sending just one resource to one cargo landing pad, uh, and you've got the infrastructure on the other side to keep emptying this, uh, all, all you need actually is launch on cargo full. It's by far the simplest way to go about it. Um, doing multi-rockets, uh, fully automated, it's not that hard if you don't care too much about filling the rocket every time. Uh, if you're trying to fill it up, like fill up the remainder after you request a bunch of other stuff, 
uh, that is a bit more of a headache, to say the least. Um, but cargo rockets in general, like for fully automated supply, it's best if you just fill them with one resource. Okay. Um, are we going to need belt? Probably. Let's figure out everything we need for the auto crafter. We need assembly machines. Well, why don't we put the rail stuff together first? And we're not going to worry about signals, we'll manufacture those on site. Uh, we need some trains. Would it be more stack efficient to bring locomotives as their input ingredients? They only stack to five. We could do 20 stacks of electronic circuits. Uh, sorry, 20 before we get one stack of electronic circuits. 10 before we get one stack of iron gear wheel. Uh, steel is most of one stack, actually. And multi-cylinder, I think, stacks to 50. It does. So one, two, three, and a bit. Uh, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure that means overall it would be more stack efficient to just send these raw resources, or less raw res more raw resources, more than, more raw than a locomotive, let's put it that way. Um, and just craft them when we get there. So we're going to need iron gear, multi-cylinder, I'm sure we'll need small electric. Let's just put these things together over here. Iron, copper... Uh, steel. I'm sure we'll need more than a thousand. I'm going to say that's true of iron and copper as well. And then... Uh, electronic circuit. How many sex is this? 50, I think. So that's actually 10% uh, of a rocket for these three. I think that makes sense. Probably the same for green circuits, or we should break it up a bit more. Uh, 50 times 200, 10,000. Yeah, no, I think we'll just go 5,000 for these. Maybe 1,000 processing units. Oh, I thought I had this combinator switched off. It's fine. It's still doing these in order. Uh, single cylinder, multi cylinder. I'll send a few of these. We can really easily make them on planet, though. In fact, maybe I won't send a few of those. Uh, I definitely want to have. Um, some of these on hand. Maybe not that many. While we're setting things up. And I might just leave that to load up and we'll see uh, how much space we've got left. Robo Jumper, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, have we given? We're gonna need batteries, probably. Five K might be a little excessive. 
Let's do an even stack size. Backward, oh no. Ho on. Okay. Game to relax. Welcome, welcome. I think you were here earlier, actually. Uh, let's see. Heat shield LDS. Say 2000. Uh, probably media defense installations. Oh, we need to take concrete. That's one of the ones that's easy to forget. Glass, say, UK. Definitely more than that. It stacks uh, to 200. Concrete. Uh, at least a thousand. We'll need a cargo landing pad and a cargo rocket silo. The resources that you lose are percentages of stacks, so stack size one things we don't have to worry about. Speaking of which, uh, I think media defense installations are actually stack size one, so we'll put some of those in. Meteor Def, uh, say 12. Umbrella. Oh, I totally missed the coronal mass ejection on Nalvis, but there's absolutely no reason to think that we should have had any concern about that. Uh, I think Wait, what? Oh, there it is. Yeah, uh, that was actually 1.6 hours ago. Didn't have any trouble. We're actually full on steam again. It was just AFK for lunch and watching in relax mode. Fair enough. Speaking of lunch, I might have to eat relatively soon. Uh, okay. So we've got cargo landing pad, cargo rocket silo, media defense, umbrella, lots of intermediate products so that we can make anything that we didn't think of. Um, bots, repair packs. Might be good. I kind of want to make a, maybe just a small one, um, but I, I kind of want to make this on planet so that we have like a worse Spidertron uh, long before we actually have Spidertrons so that we, that we can build remotely. That sounds like a really good idea, actually. Uh, what else are we taking? Core mining drills? Uh, I think we'll go for like nine. That's the equivalent of three times the first drill that we put down. Uh, and we're going to need a lot of solar panels. I did the math on how many solar panels we should need. Uh, but I don't really remember. It's only 112% of Nalvis, actually. Nalvis goes to 100 kilowatts. Okay, so we're looking at 112 kilowatts. It's something like 80% of that. So it's probably 100 kilowatts. It's like 81% or something uh, for the ratio. Oh, it's more like 90. Except the day-night cycle is a different length. It's a very different length. Uh, 
1.98 minutes. That is fast. Does that mean we need more accumulators or less? I think it probably means less. Regardless, we get something around 90 kilowatts per solar panel. Um, and if we're running nine four mining drills times 25 megawatt. Uh, whoops. 225 megawatt. Uh, two, 225 million watt, right? Divided by 90,000. Uh, we probably need about 2,500 solar panels. Let's make that an even 3,000. And we should be able to run everything we want to do on this planet off of solar. Uh, I'm not sure how many accumulators we should have, though. So we'll probably just go for a similar ratio. T-hacks when you meet in uh, interbulba? Will you try to create smarts to solve the puzzle? It can't be connected to the puzzle, but you can set inputs and it will spit outputs. Was that that incomprehensible uh, rotated grid thing? With the giant spider? I, I think I would probably have to refer to a textbook to understand the problem properly. Alright, it's going to be a minute before we have all of these solar panels. Maybe we should have a dedicated solar panel build. That seems like a good idea, actually. That thing with coordinates and spider. Okay, yes. And maybe one for accumulators as well. Let's just put it here for now. And we need some iron and battery. For our accumulators. Solar panel less than twenty four hundred. No, wait, uh, twelve hundred. Stack size fifty. That's half a chest. Hashtag content. I cracked the equations to solve it. I can make combinators for it, but I thought it would be fun that you turn equations into combinators. Yeah, we can try that. Okay. Wait, why are we not... Oh, I see. Cool. That's going to be a lot faster. Uh, maybe... Just for now... I'll cancel... Solar panels on the autocrafter. I posted it actually to Discord last time you were there. I'll try to find it. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Okay, uh, anything else we want to take? Oh, uh, power poles, inserters, of course, belts. 
Well, let's wait until we see how many stacks this is. That might take a little while, actually. 3,000 solar panels. Oh, we definitely need stack inserters for this. Uh, for this one. Fast insert is fast enough for this, though. But it's probably more UPS friendly. Alright, we've got a lot of stuff to make, and I definitely feel like a little break. So, let's do some words on stream. Give it a little save. We'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
Okay. Let's continue, shall we? Uh, I did put the SEK2 book so far on the Discord again. Oh, and let's pause the words on stream, shall we? Nice. Now then. Uh, I kind of want to take a little break um, from the stuff that I've been working on here. So what can we do besides that? Uh, there's probably some rail blocks we need to be adding. Do we have this coal mining drill cleared just yet? Let's have a peek. Uh, this uh, fissure, rather. Poor scene. We do. Wait, no, I forgot. We have to get rid of this. Oh no. In that case, put the drills back. Soon. Oh, I have no bots. There we go. And I think I forgot to put cons uh. I forgot to put mining drills on the construction train so far. But yeah, the automatic rocket loader looks like it's working very well indeed. Now then. We are needing what next? It's really technology more than we need any particular production block right now. Found the old post uh, with equations. Nice. Thank you, Valdek. I did see that. Uh, let's see. Oh, we've got Holmium processing now, right? This is just the ingot smelting that needs pyroflux. So that's not strictly necessary. Uh, let's figure out holmium processing, since there's so much finite holmium on this planet. So we're going to start with our regular rail block, I think. Uh, holmium. Holmium chloride? Oh, this is recipes. Um, it comes out as ore first, right? Just culminate. Let, let me just put a drill down. Make sure we don't need uh, hydrochloric acid. We don't. Okay. So first of all, culminate. Uh, let's check FNEI. Culminate itself goes into crushed culminate. Landfill and matter liberation data and matter. Okay, so basically just crushed hold uh, crushed holmanite is our first step. Let's get some pulverizers. Tech production. Oh yeah, the tech cards. I'm kind of procrastinating that, but we can do that. Uh, I want to figure out holmanite first if I can. Crushed Holmanite, and then we have, well, we have Crushed Holmanite. That goes into, uh-oh, we need beads. Anion Ion Exchange Beads. We've got the Hydrogen Chloride, and we know how to deal with uh, well, I, I'm not familiar with Holmium Chloride, but we'll get there. Uh, how do we make these beads? Not how do we recycle them. How do we make them in the first place? Uh, here it is. Plastic, cryonite, steam, and nitric acid. 
Uh, I don't think we have nitric acid. Rare metals, ammonia, mineral water. Yet another step. Hydrogen and nitrogen. Where do we get nitrogen from? Uh, no, where do we, where do we get nitrogen? Oh, we just atmospheric condenser it. Okay. This is a lot of steps, actually. To get holmium started. So, atmospheric condenser. We can just straight up take nitrogen from the air. Uh, and then we need to use nitrogen to make... Which one was it? Uh, what are we doing? Crushed... How do we make crushed? We need the beads. Uh, we need nitric acid, we need ammonia. That's nitrogen and hydrogen. Uh, don't we turn oxygen into hydrogen? Or separate it, rather. Hydrogen. So let's see. Uh, we need... Sand and water makes chlorine and hydrogen. Water, oxygen and hydrogen. Okay. That's probably... That makes sense. Yeah, electrolysis. Uh, that's where we're going to get our hydrogen from. Alright, electrolysis plant. And... Huh? Oh, here it is. Water separation. It's the opposite of electrolysis, actually. Or, no, I guess it is electrolysis. Uh, so that is oxygen, hydrogen... What did we need oxygen for? Maybe I should use the... Factory planner for this one. Actually, factory planner wasn't one of the mods that caused it to crash with this editor extensions thing, was it? Let's make sure. No, I think it was uh, LTN manager. Let's look at factory planner. So we need beads. Uh, can we look at it from here? Factory planner. Create a new sub factory. Beads. Okay. So we need. How do I add a recipe? Uh, products. Bead. Any in. An exchange bee. I don't care about the volume. I just want to see the tree of uh, what we need to do to make this. That's what I'm looking for. So we've got plastic, cryonite. Uh, we obviously know how to make steam. Uh, nitric acid. This is what I wanted. This is familiar. This is familiar. How do we make ammonia? Uh, hydrogen and nitrogen. Hydrogen we're getting from... Where did it go? Uh, electrolysis? I think we needed oxygen as well. Uh, so I hope we could conveniently use that up. But we could always just discard it. Oh no, recipe assumes there's... Same atmosphere on all planets and moons? Uh-oh. You can add FNEI mod for recipes and users? Really? I mean, we're using FNEI, but I, I, I gather you mean there's a feature in it that I don't understand. Let's make sure... I haven't put... Uh... Was it electrolysis? No, atmospheric condensers. 
I haven't put these in the auto crafter yet. Let's just handcraft some. Uh, I thought that the atmospheric condensers would give us the same stuff on every planet. Um, I would would have been pleasantly surprised if they're able to make them behave differently. If you click on item, you can check what you need for it. Uh, yeah, but I can... Like, FNEI is really nice if I want to see one thing at a time. Um, but it's not... As far as I know, it's not good for an overview, like what I'm trying to do right now. Uh, where's our condenser? Okay. So we can indeed get nitrogen. Uh out of the air on this planet. Uh, what's the shortcut for factory planner? Control R, that feels weird. Okay, uh, we got chemical plant, nitrogen, there it is, atmospheric condenser. Um, and hydrogen we're going to get from electrolysis. We can either do sand and water, which actually gives us not as much hydrogen. Uh... But it does give us chlorine. I've already got the chlorine build, and it balances all of the uh, hydrochloride, chlorine, hydrogen. Wait, do we already have hydrogen in the rail network? Uh, we do. Oh, and... No, that's what I meant, hydrogen. That's chlorine. Hydrogen, chlorine, and hydrogen chloride come from this block. Uh, so we don't have to worry about the hydrogen. So, nitrogen? Yeah, no, that's it. I'll just double check with that block. We could take any one fluid and it'll work itself out, right? Uh, the answer is no, but we could make it work that way with a flare stack, I guess. Don't necessarily want to do it that way. Snowball, thank you very much for the Prime sub. Much appreciated, thank you. I like Helmod to get an overview over more complex chains, since you can see everything you need in a nice format. I think I tried Helmod and it was a bit, uh... Not very intuitive UI, if I'm rem remembering the right mod. I also use Helmod, but not sure about pros and cons on Factory Planner. Okay. Uh, so let's see, we're producing hydrogen and chlorine. And we're taking both to make hydrogen chloride. I don't think I've had occasion... Where do we use chlorine? No, we're using hydrogen chloride. I think the only product from here that I've taken is hydrogen chloride. Um, so it stayed perfectly balanced. But I haven't actually dealt with the possibility of this uh, getting imbalanced. And I don't really want to vent it because I don't want to waste sand. So that might be a bit of a problem. How else do we make chlorine, though? Chlorine, hydrogen... We can use lithium chloride. Oh, we already do that, don't we? Yeah. I wonder, is this just slowly filling up, or do we actually have a chlorine consumer? 
I think we're going to end up with some more interesting and difficult byproduct management uh, compared to what we had before. Okay, factory planner. So I could just take hydrogen from that build, but it's going to end up imbalanced. Uh... What are all the ways I can use hydrogen or chlorine? Maybe we can sink it into something useful. Uh, chlorine. Here we go. We need it for... Processing rare metal core fragments. We already make it into hydrogen chloride. Uh, we need it to process... Wait, what? Rare metals plus chlorine becomes raw rare metals? Huh? Oh, that's for mining it. Okay, we need chlorine for mining rare metals, I forgot. And that's pretty much it. Hmm. I'm pretty sure we're going to end up having to vent some chlorine. Maybe in the first place in this block I should have limited production. So that there'd be space here. Also used both, the matrix solver on Helmod sometimes goes bonkers when you have to reuse a lot of items. And on FP it breaks if you select a product to reuse in multiple processes. Huh. Is this the only... No, it's not the only place we're getting hydrogen. Um... We can get hydrogen from water, and of course we can discard the oxygen without any issue. Uh, I think... Hmm. I'm just trying to think about how I should manage this. Chlorine doesn't really get used up that much. I think we should look at this one as the primary product is hydrogen chloride. And we have high priority pickup for chlorine. Well, the whole thing should just be high priority pickup. It's not like we can split it. Um... We can definitely flare stack the hydrogen since it's so easy to get, uh, since we can get it from water. And as for the chlorine, it really doesn't go into that much. Hydrogen chloride, rare metal processing, and that is literally it. it it's just this and processing rare metals. So yeah, I think, uh, how should I even do this? And for hydrogen as well. Oops. Let's head over there. It's up this way. Uh, the uranium again. I thought I was going to fly around it. Okay, can we fit pumps like so? This one and this one. And these two. Actually, maybe these would reach. That doesn't reach, but maybe this does. Uh, I don't have bots active. 
Okay, that's a good fit. But I don't think these are going to reach. I don't suppose we, we could use a red wire with this power pole. Substation is not going to cover this one. What is this covered by? Oh, I see. Okay, so red, red wire. Connect to here. That doesn't work. I'm going to have to add a power pole just for this. I don't like it. Uh, and basically, I think we want to just, well, hmm, this one actually is really tricky to balance. Oh, I know what I want to do. It goes there. These need not be connected. This goes here. And we're just going to set it to chlorine. Less than, I don't know how much. Two train loads. Maybe even less than that. But the thing is when, because this outputs both, when either of these, uh, no, we don't have, we don't have to manage the output of hydrogen. We can flare stack hydrogen because we can just get more hydrogen from water. Plastic. And we'll need a pump for decision making. Where is flare stack? There it is. Okay. So if hydrogen uh, is greater than 199,000. Then delete some hydrogen. Shouldn't you have stopped by now? How, how's it still going? The pump has stopped. Wait, what? Yeah, I think this is actually... This is actually probably all we need. We don't care if chlorine gets full. Uh, we kind of do, actually, because then we couldn't make the hydrogen here. Hmm. We've got water here. I could have I could have this recipe on at least one machine just to make sure it, it never completely deadlocks uh, what's it called a electrolysis plant we need glass and automation for you shouldn't void both at the same time yeah uh, I'm pretty sure I only need to void the hydrogen. Why is it still voiding, though? Oh, because there's more coming in from up here. So this is still greater than 199k. Alright, that's probably fine. Um, so we, we're just going to void hydrogen. And on the off chance that we end up with too little hydrogen to uh, to make like hydrogen chloride because chlorine is full and we can't output hydrogen from here um, then we'll we'll make some hydrogen directly 
should be fine. Oh, I can't fit this here? Okay, how about this then? Alright, I need a machine. Yeah, the fact that one of those resources we can void without losing sleep, uh, that definitely helps. Uh, I could probably get electrolysis plant, filtration plant, atmospheric condenser, and even flare stack. Uh, why don't I put those in low priority? Stack size, 25. Uh, all of these, actually. Biolab, 25. Russia, electrolysis plant, filtration plant, and atmospheric condenser. Last time. We definitely don't need many of these. We're trying to make a space capsule. But all of the solar panels are being put over here, I think. Definitely got the solid rocket fuel. I'll just double check. Uh, I don't think we've requested solid rocket fuel here yet, actually. Solid rocket fuel. Uh, how about, I don't know, 30? And we'll allow up to 50. Let's just put it here. Solid rocket fuel. Up to 50 in this chest. And now all of our inputs except for solar panels. Oh, because we're requesting... This is going to request a chest. Maybe I shouldn't read from buffer chest. No, we definitely need to for that. So until we get 3k solar panels, we're not making any space capsules. That's fine. It's so nice having Beryl in an asteroid belt. I can just go there with a spaceship and fill it up. Nice. We did rocket fuel, not solid. Oh, wait, what? Really? Solid rocket fuel. No? I think we're good. Oh, we need some wood. And biomatter. Uh, I think we'll remove those from the autocrafter, at least for now. Alright, we should have some electrolysis plants lying around. Or oh, they should just be in here. I, I only need one. There it is. So just in case we somehow end up too short on hydrogen, uh, we'll do it like this. Where's my, my, there we go. And we'll need another flare stack here for oxygen. Oh, that's awkward. That's a little awkward. Move this up one. And some pipe. And a flare stack. I know I automated those, but... What are you going to do? It's just going to have to be there. Cool. 
So oxygen goes bye-bye, hydrogen goes into here. And... And that's just going to run indefinitely, unless I put a condition on it. Uh, I wish I could move this one more tile up so that I could control the output with a pump. I could control the input with a pump instead, but then this substation would have to move a bit. How about this? Uh, green wire and hydrogen. Uh, I'm actually going to set it to only kick in if we're really low on hydrogen. Okay, that seems fine. And it should be starved of water in just a second. I think there's a bunch of water in this pump still. Yep, yeah, there we go. Alright. So that should mean this thing never deadlocks. It'll fill up on hydrogen chloride and chlorine. Uh, it will vent hydrogen if it's full. It will make hydrogen if it gets really low. Fantastic. Actually, maybe I should set it to something like... No, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Alright, so we know... Uh two ways we can get hydrogen, and let's bring up factory planner again. Uh, nitrogen we get from an atmospheric condenser. Nitrogen goes into chemical plant with hydrogen to make ammonia. Chemical plant. Ammonia. Pipe. Let's go. And I'll just do a cheat pipe here for hydrogen. Kind of hard to see. We need some power. Did you set hydrogen to at least one train load? Uh, yeah, it'll be the same for all three, because I can't set a different uh, provide threshold for any of these. It will definitely be, allowed, uh, be able to allow short trains for this as well. Uh, but yeah, the provide threshold is 50k, which is two fluid wagons. Uh, what's that thing you just used? You mean editor extensions? This? The other world, yes. Uh, there's a mod called editor extensions, and wow. That looks different. Oh, this got paused again, somehow. Uh, if you go into settings, mod settings, per player, and testing lab, you can actually have a surface that's parallel to your main save. Um, and that will allow you to do this on a whim. It's cheating. Cheat the way you want to cheat. It's a single player game. This is to quickly test stuff like in creative, yes. Alright, so we have ammonia. We put the ammonia into a chemical plant with uh, rare metals and mineral water to make nitric acid. Here it is. And 
we also need rare metals. And we take our nitric acid and throw together some stuff that we're already capable of getting together. Uh, we're, make, we're making ion beads. Alright, so steam, it doesn't care what temperature. So I think we'll probably just bring in water. How fast does it consume? Only half a steam per second. So we'll probably just bring in water and electric boil that to the minimum temperature for steam, 100 degrees. Uh, that's wrong. There we go. And this goes here. And then we need plastic and cryonite rod. Cryonite rod. And that's how iron beads. Yeah, that's a couple more variables than I can hold in my head, especially with unfamiliar stuff. Uh, so, we did all of that so that we could take our iron beads. Uh, beads, there we go. And put them into... Uh, use, uh, to consume crushed holmanite. Crushed hormonite. No, it's a... Uh... No? We get it back 50%. Okay. Iron beads, crushed hormonite, and hydrogen chloride. And apparently we can... Oh, that's dirty holmium water. So we have to take more ion beads, combine it with that, and then we get stone, crushed, ion, and water back. This, this is going to be a fun one. Damn, they are really throwing the complexity at us relatively early. When you only have 10k hydrogen in the tank, there will be no train coming. And then electrolysis will be useless. Uh, hydrogen is a byproduct. Um, like, this this block right here is not built to make hydrogen. Um, the hydrogen needs to get out of the way of making uh, chlorine. So... If a train comes and takes hydrogen, hmm, maybe I need some latch behavior for the hydrogen. Uh, I could set it to, oh wait, we've already got it connected, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this is what I should have done. Hydrogen less than chlorine. Except then it's still going to go round in circles, uh, running electrolysis and venting hydrogen. So I think what we should do for the sake of this uh, pump is pretend that we've got more hydrogen. About a thousand more actually. Hydrogen, call it 2,000. Okay, so if there's, if we're below, if we're above 199k out of 2k, 200k here, we're going to vent it. Uh, if hydrogen is less than chlorine, we're going to make more hydrogen and only hydrogen. 
However, uh, we're going to pretend just for this little decision that there's actually 2,000 more hydrogen in this tank. So it thinks there's 201, 200,000 approximately. That should work, I think. Can't wait to see Iridium, indeed. Albion Light, Big Clown, uh, Skullboys, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so for Holmium processing, uh, what I do know is the first part of the block is going to involve some crushes, uh, some pulverizers, rather. And then we need to take our crushed Holmanite. And I'm pretty sure there's only one thing we can do with it. Uh, crushed Hormonite. This is how we make it. Okay, right click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we need chemical plant. Which means we need iron beads. Question is if we're going to do the beads somewhere else. Which... I don't know. Good question. Ion beads can go to improved pollution filter. Wow. Uh, that's our recipe that we're already looking at. That is Naquium. Uh, that's handling the dirty water. Dirty holmium water. And that's nothing. Okay, I don't think we want ion beads in the rail network. Um, but it's going to be a bit of a headache. I could always have one block that just does crushed Holmanite, but the stack size is only 50. Well, that's not that bad. If we have a block to do the crushing, I could do the crushing on one side. And then deal with the crushed volume on the other. I don't want it to look too much like what I did last playthrough. That was a bit of a behemoth, a bit of a mess. Um, let's see. We need... I didn't actually end up using this, did I? Ammonia plus mineral water. Okay. There's so many steps I'm tempted to do ion beads in a train block, in a rail block. One, two, three, four. How many inputs are we looking at? Uh, two fluid, three fluid, and three solid. Four fluid and three solid. And that's on top of our pulmonite. So four fluid, four solids. Maybe that's not that bad. Actually, how are we going to do more than two types of fluid? Um, provided by train. Interesting question. Uh, let's see. Not like that, that's for sure. What if we put... One fluid here. One fluid... Didn't we already... No, that was three fluids. One fluid here. One like this, and one like this, and unfortunately we can't fit a big container here by one tile, otherwise that would actually have been pretty easy. 
unfortunate. Uh, but we could probably... Yuck. I don't like that one. I do not love that at all. Pumps, why you gotta be so long? That doesn't look great either. I could use both sides of the block. That might be the way to go. Oh, or... No, never mind. These two would overlap. We're so close to getting a really nice, neat layout here. Uh, and it was four solids, which we can easily drop into the bulk rail unloaders. We can fit eight train loads of stuff here, so... If we set the request threshold to, like, a train load and a half, it should be fine. So it was plastic, cryonite, rare metals, and uh, holmanite for the solids. Maybe I will do this. Does this take up less space? Uh, slightly. At least there's a symmetry to it. Let's get our output. Get it merged somewhere. A uh, big container is not going to be big enough to center it here. I really think I should just use both sides of the block this time. So on each side we'll do something like this and I don't love that being in the middle on this side How about to uh, pumps go like this and these two are going to be connected so then we could have uh, how would this look that wouldn't be too bad actually Except we need four outputs from each of these to manage it. Therefore... I would prefer if we could fit one of these like so. A couple more tiles down, that would be weird. Getting somewhere now. Uh, I also think I'm not gonna love what we're gonna do with the fluid storage over here. 
Oh, what about this? Just put a huge storage tank down here. And then we can manage our outputs from here. Might be good. I really wish this just happened to have one more tile at this end. Would have been much better. Okay, can we flip that? Uh, kind of. Uh-oh. Nope, that's good. Uh, Panda Bamboro? Uh, Borol? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, uh, but we don't need the... We don't actually need four solids on each side. Let's see, we need only one solid for this. This really is a tricky build. I'm really glad we can mess around in the editor while uh, while we're building up all these solar panels. Are you going for rail blocks on all planets, or is this a setup for the main base? Uh, for the main base. I'm going to go for the minimal amount of stuff on outposts. Uh, I'm even going to really try to make it work despite the tiny stack sizes of, like, core fragments. I think that might be interesting. Alright, so let's just get an idea of the shape of this. Uh, we're going to have nitrogen coming in from the rail network, I think. And... Wait, I said one, two, three, four... Okay, let's check which of these we might put in the rail network. Um, first of all, there's nitrogen. Nitrogen... It's literally just for ammonia. Okay. So, nitrogen plus oxygen. Uh, sorry, hydrogen makes this. Ammonia. I think we'll probably put that on one side. Nitrogen. Hydrogen. And then we need ammonia somewhere. Uh, we also need mineral water and water. So let's say up here we have water. And down here mineral water. Next step is nitric acid. Actually, if nitric acid is something worth putting in the rail block, this might look very different. Putting in a into the rail network rather. Empty singularity fuel cell. Fertilizer. Uh, night vision, portable solar panel, anti-biter virus capsule. Sounds nasty. Uh, fine emocyte powder plus nitrogen. Or rather, fine emocyte powder. Cadian iron B. I think we will be putting this in the rail network. Okay. Yeah. 
that's really going to simplify this build. Um, instead of one, two, three fluid inputs and one uh, solid input, we just dropped this to one fluid input. And then it's literally just two fluids, two solids to make the ion beads. Okay then. So we don't. Whoops. Uh, so we don't need this. Um. What was this supposed to be? Nitric acid. Nitric acid from the rail network. Uh, plastic, granite, plastic, granite, sticky, granite rod, that is. I don't know if it'll be worth bringing the other solids in on one side. Actually, I think I'll do the ion beads build on the right side. It's kind of similar to what we did last time. So that's just going to be plastic and crinite. Uh, and we also need to drop off water. So we can make steam. There's no steam recycling in this block, it looks like. Uh, where are we going to squeeze in our cheat inputs for testing? Good question. How about we just... Oh, this is bulk rail unloader. Oops. And then... Something like this. Uh, let's get a super... Super long arm inserter. Superior inserter. That's a small one. Superior long inserter. There we go. Alright, so what is it? Plastic and crinite rod? Crinite rod. Uh, kiss for tea, hacks with tongue. Lovely. Thank you so much. Uh, all right. So we've got everything but the water. Um, but I want to merge and split. Wait, what's the rate? I think it's going to be really slow. But we can't do... We can't do a delivery cannon chest for these. It'll just pick up whatever as far as the plastic and crinite go. I can hear T-Hex blushing. <laughs> How dare you. Uh, probably just do a strong box. It, it'll drive me crazy that it's not centered, but what can you do? Actually, no, let's use a delivery cannon chest. 
but we'll use loaders to get there. That'll be neat enough. Uh, plastic and granite rod. That will definitely be neat enough. Well, that looks weird. Okay, that's better. Uh, red, red wire. There we go. Uh, and we've got 20 stacks for each. And they, this one goes to 100. Alright, plastic less than 2k. Granite rod less than 4k. And then plastic granite, nice and even down the middle. Cool, I like where this is going. Uh, now we need to do water and preferably have it line up in a good way. Oh, I know. Let's use a vanilla tank like this. Um, that's going to be barely enough room. So maybe we'll add some more fluid containers. Uh, we're going to need... We're going to need lots of room for the fluid input because it's got this cringy two fluid pattern. Uh, and we're going to need to flash our steam, uh, flash our water to steam. I think I did that wrong. Oldest steam that we can get is all we need. And I'm sure the ratio for these is going to be trivial. Three, ste three steam per second from all of these. And this can do 105. Okay. We're definitely going to need just one boiler. Uh, but where to put... Definitely here. That is by far going to be the neatest way to do this. Uh, assuming that we can fit um, this might have to go a bit further out than it normally would unless we move this over here it's not too bad okay I lied it's terrible how about that doesn't as well. Hmm. Well, the water isn't connected if we do that. Also, the steam doesn't go anywhere. Rumble. That's almost too good of a fit not to do, even if it makes this look different. Uh, there's one, one belt of solid in, one belt of solid out. I think we'll do the outputs like this. So actually our steam will go like so. That doesn't seem too bad. And on the other side... Something similar. Uh, 
That actually looks pretty nice. Whoops. Alright, I, I do like where this one's going. Uh, now we get we need to get a feel for just how many cadian iron beads uh, we need. Uh, if I had, no, this would all have to move down one tile. But I could maybe use the bigger containers. So we can fit, um, we can fit two train loads of water here. That doesn't look that bad. Yeah, I think I like this more. All right, uh, so on this side, we're going to need, what was the, what were the beads for again? Holmanite, uh, right? First of all, we have to crush it. So our only input on this side, I think, the physical input is uh, Holmanite, if I'm not mistaken. Almanite. Oh, it's not working that way. Never mind. Actually, I don't even know what load we're going to have over here. Uh, first step is pulverizer. We take the holmanite, we crush the holmanite, and then we get a crushed holmanite plus stone, and then crushed hol crushed holmanite only has one recipe. We need ion exchange beads, which are over here. Crushed Holmanite and Hydrogen Chloride. Okay. Hydrogen Chloride. And that was in a chemical plant, I think. Chemical plant. Uh, so we're looking for... Holm... Is it holmium chloride? I didn't pay attention. Yeah, holmium chloride. That's the only thing. Alright, we have some recycling we have to do. 25% 2 times holmium chloride. 50% 2 times beads. 50% 2 times crushed. And we get dirty holmium water. Okay. This, I think this is going to end up looking pretty more or less similar to what we did last time, actually. Because we really can't justify putting, for example, beads in the rail network. Uh, but on the other hand, where does this go? That's uh, actually a really good fit. Uh, on the other hand, we're going to end up with so many complicated steps in one block. Uh, what's this supposed to be? Steam. Hmm. Steam. And go over here. Uh, let's cheat in some water. Ooh, 
Oh. I regret that I have but one place to put substations. Whatever. Alright, so... Beads crushed and hydrogen. Beads and crushed get recycled. I think we'd probably like to do the uh, direct swap. It's probably possible to do it without even having a chest between them. Um, but the shape of it might not allow for that. Dirty Holmium water is coming out. So that's going to have this kind of shape uh, for the fluid output, I think. Or how about like this? Uh, solid input output is going to be interesting. At least the fluid is only one input, one output. It's going to make it a lot easier. We can... Hmm. Hmm, actually. That might be trickier than expected. If we use a 2x2 two two chest... Oh yeah, I think I might like this. Let's go clockwise. So, we're gonna need a... Oh, that might be too difficult. Uh, it depends on the rate of consumption. We're going to output everything but our final product into these shared chests. So we're just going to blacklist holmium chloride. Blacklist. Let's get some power here. I've had enough of the flashing. Uh, that goes there. And input here is unconditional. Good morning, Yatuwatu. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Uh, I think with the slow rate of consumption. and the net negative for these two. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem if we just have them swapping items this way. We don't even need to put any logic on it. So input maybe like this. And output like this, I guess. Uh, I don't love either of these. I could do a bigger chest in the middle, but no, I don't think I'd like to do that. I quite like this design, actually. We're not going to have room for a beacon. I think that's fine, actually. This There's so many production steps uh, that we're going to have in one block for this that... I think we will not worry about beacons until we have the beacons. Okay. 
Let's get our inputs. Hydrogen chloride. Uh, avoid all the dirty water. Get some inputs. And the inputs are iron beads and crushed hominite. Crushed hominite. And uh, let's see, give me some belt here. And we're just going to avoid the output. Wait, what? Oh, we need a filter on this side. And down here as well, for that matter. Uh, that should be whitelist. Okay. I'll just show that we are getting that. Maybe sushi belting and putting back on the belt is a solution. Uh, you could, but having the belt blocked is something that's really easy to have happen. We actually are gaining crushed hominite and beads in these chests, which is suffice to say not what I was expecting. Um, because these, in these inserters will take turns. I think it's partly because they're both pointing at two separate resources. In which case... Hmm. That actually really complicates it, because normally I... If I want to be sure, I'd say, like, if iron beads in this chest are equal to zero, you can pick up iron beads from the belt. Um, but we need to have separate conditions for both resources at the same time. that complicates things. Unless, I don't suppose it's going to just work if... If these all have to be everything equals zero. No, surely it'll consume one of these resources. And we'll end up stuck with just one of them. I want to set filters, but... Okay, we're going to swap the input and out. Oh, god damn it! I need long-arm filters. When do we get superior long-arm inserters? Superior filter insert. That's a shorty. Uh, superior long filter inserter. That's what I need. I mean, I don't really need the superior part. But... I have a feeling it's going to be a hot minute before we have that. Material 2, Astro 2, and Optimization Tech Card, and Production Science. It's the same ratio on the beads and the holmium, so it would empty the chest equally. Uh, would it? I feel like even if technically that should work, uh, it's exactly the kind of thing that will eventually just screw you over somehow. Uh, Murphy, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Is there some sort of in-game shortcut to enter the editor? Uh, yes, Control-E. Same as 
struggling editor mode normally. Without disabling achievements, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, Data Gnome, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Not sure if the output ratio is 100% precise. Uh, it is over time. Um, tested it a, a little bit last playthrough. Yeah, the mod is called Editor Extensions. So, well, I, I could make more room for inserters. The thing is I need filter in and filter out. On that side. If we have pipe like so. Then we can have output and input. We would have to use belt weaving though. If I, if I want to have a filter on the input based on what is or isn't in this chest. In other words, uh, blacklist. Set filters blacklist. So we're not picking up off the belt if resources are available in this chest. But I need a filter for the output. Um, I guess... There's no way we can... It's, it's gonna look a bit belt weavy still if I do it this way, but I could filter the output like this. I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be a loader. Too much, but I definitely don't like it. How much need to produce? Because if it's only one on the chest, but need more, it won't work. Uh, I don't understand the question. Let's see. How do you fit this together? Maybe we just make it more spacious. That feels like admitting defeat. I got a question for Factory Planner. Why is it not showing the right product number? Trying to plan out energy signs and Helmod was giving me problems with the matrix. Uh, I'm not sure about that one. I haven't really used those mods for like calculating the entire base like that. I just tend to use rate calculator on the spot. This one is very tricky. I definitely want the chests swapping items in the middle like this, if I can. But maybe that's not the way to go. I don't really want sushi. I don't want to have to have it go all the way back and come back around. We can't filter long arms. The, the input fluid and output fluid and having to filter, uh, sorry, not filter, but having to recycle two resources at the same time that are both inputs. Uh, Makes it kind of tricky. 
Vertical possibility? Huh? Vertical possibility. Oh, as in just bring the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what I meant by... It feels like admitting defeat, but we could definitely just make this more spacious. Uh, like if these... Uh, have some tiles between them. For example, like this. Or... Like this. Uh, we could do the filter... Like so. Wait, no. It's... No, 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 that's, that's right, that's right. Blacklist the final product. Holmium Chloride. Holmium Chloride Blacklist. And put these in unconditionally. And then on the input side, uh, we want to whitelist. Wait, no. I think I was thinking of the output. On the input side, we're going to have those two resources. Brushed, Holmanite, and... Wait, what? Oh, uh, but beads, right. That's not a fluid or anything. Bead. And we want to set filters blacklist. So whenever there's a type of item in this chest, it won't pick it up from here. That doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. I mean, I, I hate how much space it takes up, but it's probably fine. At least it's a neat repeating pattern. Alright, hydrogen chloride, and we need to deal with our final product output, which is just going to go over here. It's going to be the whitelist version this. Okay. Uh, that is looking not that bad, actually. And copy, paste, flip this. I think. So once there's... Uh, let's get our chlorine over here. Hydrogen chloride, that is. Once there's something in these intermediate chests that goes to blacklist. That's not so bad, I guess. It takes up a lot more space than I like. Output in middle, yes. Yes, indeed. Alright, what kind of rate are we getting from this? Drum roll, 2 holmium chloride per second. And 16 dirty water. How many crushes does it take to keep up with this? Uh, with just eight machines. Oh, do we have room for bacon? We can... Okay, the fact that we have room for a basic beacon uh, does make me happy. Even if we're only touching four machines per beacon. That's better than expected. That actually doesn't look that bad. Uh, and we 
could probably have... Uh, let's move these across. Uh, room for a wide area beacon. Where are the beacons? Like so. This looks good, thank you. Bird, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Dark Rail, if I didn't say so, welcome, welcome. I know what happened. I picked the wrong show thing because I wanted stuff. Okay, fair enough. Can you supply it fast enough? Uh, we'll we'll find out. So this would need uh, eight crushed holmanite per second and eight iron beads. This is actually exactly eight iron beads over here. Uh, and if we want a basic beacon. We can fit it in with just one. Very easy. Uh, where is it? Basic beacon goes here. Uh, and obviously we could just put a wide area beacon on one side of this. Okay, so... Is that actually... Yeah, so far this is an exact ratio for ion beads. Um, that just leaves 8 crushed holmanite per second, which means 4 of these machines, which means 2 per... per pair like this. Uh, could I maybe make it so that we could... Oh. Oh, I like that. Uh, could I push these to the middle... ...so that a basic beacon could cover all four of these? That's good. Wait, does it reach like this? I don't think so. Oh, it does. Uh, let me guess. That doesn't quite work out. I don't mind this, though. Modules in Beacon may take it out of balance. Uh, yes, they will. But nevertheless, it does give us a easy upgrade path to take advantage of temporarily. Uh, okay. So we've just got Holmanite coming in. What's the rate of Holmanite? 16 per second? I think a delivery cannon chest can handle that, right? Or rather, the invisible inserters from the bulk rail unloaders. Why is the input for some of the machines not connected? Uh, which one? I mean, we're still working on it. Okay, it looks like... Oh yeah, the bulk rail unloaders can very easily keep up with that. Pulmonite only stacks to 20. Wow. So we're going through almost a stack a second here. Jeez. Uh, 40 times 20 times 2. 1600. It's literally 100 seconds. It's exactly a hundred seconds uh, that we need to bring in the Holmanite. Missing belts? Yeah, it's in progress. It's fine. Don't worry about it. 
Now, what's the most elegant look for this part, I wonder? How fast is this? Don't forget we have to deal with stone as well. Whoops. But... Four per second... Oh, sorry, two per second for each of these. So we can definitely just use a filter. Inserto. And... These ones can go over here, I guess. Can we get some symmetry and nice layout with the iron beads, perhaps? So the bulk red... The bulk rail unloaders embedded inserters can simply transfer items directly to another container. Yes. Yes, they can. It's uh, not as fast as lots of loaders, but it's it's decent. Um, we can clearly do 30 per second between the two of these, although stack... Uh, it does benefit from stack size upgrades, so maybe this would actually cause problems with our build. But we've definitely got room to fix it, if that's the case. Uh, okay, so we need a splitter. How about down here? Oh, that's not quite right. Well, technically it is, but I don't like to show inserters a corner. Uh, four Holmanite per second, let's make it a stack inserter. Whoops. And then our beads. Uh, let's see. Our beads need to go to or different places. Uh, oh, I forgot. We can just change the way this outputs. So it should be somewhat easy no matter what we do. Uh, I could maybe... Hmm... I could move these down a bit, so we can fit a splitter up here. Splitter... Where's my splitter? There we... up oh, there, there was already a stack. It's fine. Don't worry about it. But this doesn't really work out, does it? How about this? Could do worse. I think. Can we get some resources? Oh, I see. Stone. Let's just avoid that for the moment. Uh, whitelist stone. And we want our beads. That's a good reach. We want our beads like this. Maybe not quite like this, but... That should show us where this needs to go. I think this one's on the wrong side, though. Could we maybe... doesn't it this one doesn't matter and this one we want it to be on the left right I think I'm 
So let's bring this through here. Splitter like so. Delete that. That works. And then I kind of kind of bugs me this W inserters a little bit. And lastly, this goes over here. Oh, that's... Oh no, the symmetry is going to break unless we do something drastic. Oh no. You gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, that's not that symmetrical. What if... Uh, if we do it like this instead... It's going to be swapped just for this one. I don't like that. I also don't really like using two belts for one belt, basically, over here. Oh no, hashtag symmetry matters, right? So the bulk... Oh, you've used them for years and didn't know that? Well, that's... That's what happens in Factorio sometimes. Alright, uh, I think we'll leave it there for today. We'll perfect this tomorrow, I hope. How's our solar panels and stuff doing? We are up to 1.8k. Uh, it's taking a bit longer than I thought it would. Maybe... Indeed. Uh, maybe we could spam a little bit more of this. Uh, oh! Never mind. It's fine. Uh, let's give that a save real quick. And see who's streaming Factorio. Factorio. Thank you, Veldek. Yes, you have to be Factorio Pro to understand Factorio symmetry. You just can't seem to ignore it. I mean, yeah, I like to make things look good as well as function, if possible. Uh, we've actually got a few options here. Should we go with Andy, since he's doing K2SE? Or maybe... It's been a minute since I raided Gamer's Circle, I think. Let's drop in our Gamers. All opinions are welcome, but there's only one right way. <laughs> oh no. Alright, thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord or the Blueprints if you're into that. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. We will be continuing with space exploration tomorrow. And uh, hopefully we'll finally go to Brannis uh, and get our precious, precious Vulcanite. So we can finally get Production Science and Coverex. Take care, Veldak. Game to relax, cut and true. Thanks for hanging out. And to everyone else as well. Uh-oh. Oh, that's a problem. We don't have enough power. <gasps> All right. Hey, hey, Tyrannosaurus X. Thank you for the big raid. Appreciate that. Look at all the Spider-Trons. All right, this is the first time we ran into a power issue over here, so we got to shift. We got to shift to uh, create more solar.